November 22nd. It was an all right day at school today. Uh, there was some weird stuff in the news, but I wasn't really paying attention. Went off to school. Uh, Mr. Michelson was a dick again. And Eddie, he won't accept responsibility for putting me in the friend zone with Laurie. But it's all right. We're still mates. I finally went to uh, Coach Edison about the weird hair in the places. And, um, well, this is what he said. Mahaba and welcome to Pot Topic Podcast, Turkish edition. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> Hello, I'm your host, Tom, and to my left we have the other host, we have Taryn. Grab some lollies and go sniff some children. <laughs> we have Andy. Hello, everyone. We have Beth. Oogly, googly, go away. We have... Hello, I'm uh, Professor Cumdumpus Mary Pimple. I'm from the Institute of Recognition of Petitions and Social Change. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you so much for having me on the show and how much I'd like to sign a petition to say that all petitions need to be signed. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs> and we have special guest star, Johnny, all the way from Turkey. Merhaba, hoş geldiniz, iyi akşamlar, buyurun. Oh, six <laughs> burns, listener. Funny, and a six merry burns. bonjour to you too. <laughs> he's, he's all the way from Language. Turkey. He's all the way from Turkey, he's here. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. Skyping in all the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, Johnny, other than being a contributor to our community pot, he is one of our oldest and dearest friends, and he's just come back for holiday. So Love you all. We've organised a special pot topic just for him. Quite like the idea that out in Turkey they're sort of, oh, where do you holiday? <laughs> oh, I have a holiday in Bromley. Oh, I've heard they've got terribly good kebabs there. <laughs> <laughs> Skiing is simply delightful. No. <laughs> Best ke- kebab just outside of Istanbul. <laughs> no, no, that's, in Pet, that's in Petswood. We've, we've, oh, okay. all, we've already discussed um, how wonderful Bromley is. It's so boring, it caused the Tunguska event. At, but it does play host <laughs> to our wonderful po- topic podcast and the top. <laughs> so are we going to put gonna Bromley on the map? I'm going to get this smooth one of these days. <laughs> we have two pots, one from our community, one from the hosts. We put everyone's suggestions in for topics to talk about. We speak for about two hours and bore the shit out of you. Done. Ah, self deprecation mod- so mod- sweet. Modest goals. There we go. <laughs> So, what have we all been up to this week? Well, should we bust the whi- whiskey out first? Oh, as, fuck. As, our, right. as our, our man in Istanbul, not Constantinople, Constantinople. Constantino- I was just about to say, can we just give a little verse? Not Constantinople. Istanbul, not Constantinople. No, it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. Carry on. I don't know the words. No, me neither. I know, it just goes, mena, 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 Turks. Okay, so Johnny, do you care to introduce the whiskey to us? Okay, the whiskey for tonight is the Balvenie Caribbean Cask, <laughs> aged 14 years. <laughs> It's so pretty. <laughs> it is very pretty. A Caribbean cast as well, so it's a bit rummy, is it? Caribbean yeah, it's cast. distilled and then put in bourbon, and then for the last year, I think, put in rum. Ah, oh, from the oh, heather top islands yeah. of... <laughs> Right, so <laughs> Haiti. Yeah, it's just. It's really, I can imagine that that was me puzzling for something vaguely Scottish sounding in let's, Caribbean let, and failing. Let's get the pop on the mic. Hey. Oh yeah. Oh, this is a whiffy one. Ooh. Lovely. Right, pour that shit out. So, I think the major thing that's happened this week is we've had birthday rounders for our good friend Matt Goss. Love you, Matt. Wonderful day. Absolutely yeah. brilliant day. We all just got absolutely wrecked in the sun in Regent Street Park Regent's Park even yeah. and uh, played a bunch of rounders played a bunch oh, of rounders drunk, drunk and rounders it is, it is one of the highlights on my uh, my social calendar it has been for the last five years and it's a fact for the last three years Matt's not wanted to organise a birthday party but it's actually <laughs> we, we've made it happen anyway <laughs> <laughs> fuck you Matt it's not yours anymore yeah, good fun and then of course we left there and went straight on to our good friend Kimmy's birthday party here in the sawmill mm, which, fuck me that was a that was one. So fun. i felt so poorly monday morning <laughs> started on saturday i left about monday and yeah. had a saturday? day and a half i had a day and a half off saturday you were a day and a half late mate <laughs> that's true <laughs> did, I, did we work out that i i, I slept for something like was it six, about six, about twenty one hours? It was about twenty one twenty one hours. It was about twenty one hours. Dear God, he was so wrecked after two days of it, he just passed out. But like, what, 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 what did you leave? Worse? <laughs> when did you leave? Because you you must have left after I went to work on Monday. About seven p.m. Monday evening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you know it was yes. Yeah. You did, well, it was seven p.m. Monday evening. But were you still you weren't here? You, you, no, 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 no. I, I, I had I hadn't come home from work. 
Not that I was coming back here, but... Mm. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Thank you very much for hosting, guys. Yeah, well awesome. done. We do our best. I have to say, this whiskey is pretty fucking what special. What do you guys think is of it? it? Nice? Oh, it smells cool. amazing. Have, have I don't like cheers. whiskey, but it smells fantastic. Cheers, people. All right, then. Cheers. Let's, cheers. Have, let's have, have a tinkle. Cheers for Johnny. What do you say in cheers in Istanbul? Um, Sherefe. 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 Hey. Um, yeah, I just, just have to get a quick one out there. Um, between... Matt's birthday round is in Kimmy's par birthday party here. I went to a third birthday event between the two of them. Um, I bought tickets go to go see Frisky and Manish at the Wonderground for uh, oh, yeah. Heather's birthday. They are a phenomenal cabaret act. If anyone ever gets the opportunity to go see them, I can't recommend it highly enough. They are quite literally staggering. Wow. Absolutely gobsmacking. Because kind of cabaret is very vague. What kind of things... They do. They they have a tendency of uh, playing around with famous pop songs and putting them in kind of as though done by different artists or sort of taking selections of songs and kind of turn them into a, a stalker medley that sort of stuff. Yeah, they, my favourite one of theirs is they do an amazing rendition of Kate Nash doing Kate Bush. Yes, oh, <laughs> which wow. is fucking incredible. Kate Bash, yeah. Kate Bash. Kate Kate Bash. Look it up on Manish. YouTube. Go Very check good. them out. <laughs> um, where were they performing? Because there's so many venues in London that have it was the London out. Underground. Oh, it's, oh. it's the pop-up one that's there over summer before it uh, becomes the other okay. belly. Is it? Or yeah, yeah, the other yeah, belly. Yeah, it's attached uh, to the, okay. the other belly. Awesome. So yeah, that 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 was pretty cool. Um, so that that was three birthdays in, in one day for me. Oh, yeah. I, my God, it that's showed. Well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember much between the hours of about eleven o'clock Saturday night and four a.m. Sunday morning. You don't need to. They you weren't very shit. talkative before either. What? Because what? The, the, the entire time I was up on Saturday, I don't really remember you speaking a lot. Other than to say that you were having trouble talking. <laughs> that was Sunday. <laughs> sorry. Oh, that was that, Sunday. That, yeah, no, yeah. Okay, Are you sure that wasn't me? <laughs> that was on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I became suspiciously silent towards the table. No, you, you were both. You were both pretty silent. Yeah. You, you had Tom as a wingman, and he was yes. covered by an underpants gnome. Yeah, we were both in the same wasted space as each other <laughs> wasted <laughs> space the vast majority <laughs> of that like, party i like to call the mind attic <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, the you might have a dorian gray portrait up there it's looking <laughs> delightful because <laughs> at the moment i'm not <laughs> <laughs> showing the strain a little i either that or your dorian portraits up there just talking to you really eruditely <laughs> 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 and you're just on the outside just like, uh, why won't anybody <laughs> listen to me <laughs> it's so boring up here with a trucking horse and a load of dust <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so moral of the story kids is get some sleep <laughs> yeah don't do oh. three days worth of partying in one day <laughs> Never Will we ever learn? Though. No. No. <laughs> Never grow up. Right, Johnny cool. is going to be the first person to take from the hot pot, so us. Well done, Beth. Look at her I, doing I some hosting. I didn't even need to do anything then. Oh, Ooh. wait, actually, I've missed a part. Where's the spam message gone? Oh, it's it's just on the corner of the table, dear. Um, we got a spam, so... Could do, 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 do a quick bit for... Um, yes. Beth Spam of the show! <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a spam message that I thought was quite fun on the website. Um, so where you feedback to give topics in for us to uh, talk about on episodes, please do do that. Uh, sometimes some spam gets in and this was the best one that I saw today. <clears throat> I sing in a choir when to use off-label drugs. I don't agree with Ted Cruz, but I will give him props for wailing up there. You've got to stand for what you believe in. So I am proud that he's standing for what he believes in and he is stepping up to the Senate work. Then it is be it. He has the floor. <laughs> wonderful. Sandy, July 13th, 2015. Oh, spam, <laughs> spam pot. Spam, 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 spam. We should say, actually, we should start dating these things. This is July the 22nd today. Mm. Yes. But it'll probably come up when? It'll come out probably September? around the 22nd of August. So <laughs> it's probably worth saying that. But anyway, I completely cut you off, Johnny. After introducing you, I then went, fuck off. Go on, Virgin. <laughs> we got. Took me a minute to get my mouth around this one. So hey. it's the first topic. Yes. Uh, if the Pope shits in the woods and there's no one around to hear it, is he still a Catholic? Alex in it, circa 2015, United Kingdom, brackets, Hanover Dynasty, Anglo-Hegemonic period, bracket. And <laughs> let's just say Alex is in the room and part of the audience tonight. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Good day, Jesus. Um, no, because uh, the Pope does not shit. 
because he, 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 is, he, is, he is part God, he's God on Earth, as close as we can get, and if you shit, you're creating something evil, and he can't possibly create something evil, because God never ever did anything like that, <clears throat> Satan. But surely our pro- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you find, isn't it, is he's God's, he's God's uh, appointed messenger on Earth, and as, if I was going to... He's, like he's like the Metatron, but sh- the Shittatron. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, what's, what's so great about it, he's not only he's God's divine messenger on Earth, he's God's elect divine messenger on earth but anyway so uh <laughs> if you're going to talk about semantics and whether he shits in the woods uh i would say that there was a pope that probably shat surrounded by wood at one point that was a light <laughs> <laughs> and that's genuinely true that yeah that'll be one of the anti-popes no doubt no 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 is it was the during the uh the the, the, the worst part of when eastern europe uh, sorry western europe was uh, was stricken with the bubonic plague um, there was a theory which was at least interesting, if not, mm, yeah, that apparently fire could purge air and that the, the air, the foul smelling air was with the cause of the plague, which wasn't a million miles away from where it was. So they decided to come up My with this particular smile. idea, yeah, the particular idea that they would encircle the Pope in this ring of fire. Uh, and, um, he would simply set in the middle of this huge ring of fire thoroughly bored being the Pope, and lo and behold, he didn't in fact catch the plague, but he did, however, sit in a ma- enormous ring of fire in the Vatican City for approximately a year. So the fumes so would be quite shitty. It would be, well, um, uh, the fact that he could still breathe is actually pretty astonishing. I was going to say, I would have thought he would have cooked. You, you, you'd have thought that it would be intensely dangerous and he'd at least have no even oxygen or anything like that, but apparently he survived it and didn't catch the plague, so who, who's wrong? Uh, but the man who actually Catholic. told him, yeah, I was exactly. Say, yeah. <laughs> but the man, the man who invented the idea, was the first person to document how he caught it and survived it, and then passed on his expertise to. Wow. Uh, was that the theory of, of it coming from smell? That it was in fact new, or... pneumonic as well as bubonic. Right. Uh, so therefore, we had to transmit it through sort of you know air. It was airborne rather than simply uh, going through contact with bubos. Strangely enough, it actually turned out to be mimetic. Yes. <laughs> just, just people saying the word play, they'd start exploding in, in, in pus and boils. <laughs> oh, have you got the plague? Oh, pah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, bugger, not again. <laughs> so, so it comes to the thing like the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we're going to lose this every lose this game every recording tonight now, on we? Plague Facials. <laughs> <laughs> Who loses? My village. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna Jameson on the Western Europe tour says plague to a lot of poor people. Mm, plague. <laughs> Write your complaints about the game coming up in every episode to emails at pottopicpodcast.com. <laughs> the game. <laughs> the game as the subject title. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that'll do, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so Cheers, Alex. Yeah. Oh, he's actually sitting here in the audience tonight. Hello! Did you just notice Alex? No, I'm just pointing it out to the listeners. <laughs> oh, is, is, is this one of our opportunities to say, uh, yeah, the Pod Topic podcast is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, we've got two people. We've applause! Uh, utterly silent. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Darren here, regular community contributor and of shit topics. Thank you. Or as we like to call them, shopics. Oh, don't, have, have don't, you, don't worry, he told me the other day, he's safeguarded, he safeguarded himself against further shit topics. What he's done is he's outsourced his future topics to Yahoo questions. Oh, fuck's sake, what are we? My so, brother, you know, my brother You know, you know that last one we got about uh, social media and whatnot? We were oh, like, oh, that's actually, that's actually a good topic. Yeah, Yahoo. We're you not my brother, my brother and me. Include? Um, this is not an audience participation. He's a dyslexic uh, Jew, uh, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but it's <laughs> part of the audience participation. An audience Nam, La flu boop. Ah, thank you, Dabba. So what's the, uh, what's the flopic that I'm... Right, that's from our community. That's Pal from Pol Pot. pulling from I'm, our community. I'm pulling a flopic out of our... Community. Okay, uh, this one. I, I get it. I'm, I'm being chased here. Right, the lead singer of Morbid Angel, or now ex-lead singer of Morbid Angel, Dave Vincent, says... Not actually from Morbid No, Angel. actually from Morbid Angel, Tom. <laughs> He's from Happy Happy Demon. Be- be- before we let Hal go on, hello Dave, thank you for the question. I don't know, thanks, <laughs> thanks very much. Uh, when you think of the word successful, who do you think of first and why? Kim Kardashian and it's unfortunate. <laughs> Okay. Oh shit! That's that. Well, that's a pick of an answer because I can't. I can't actually take that to pieces. I can. Timmy Mallet. Can... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we used to watch him quite often, so that's quite success. I used to watch him too. Mallet. <laughs> <it. sighs> 
um, yeah, unfortunately, she is quite successful. Um, but it's I, I, I don't really measure success in just gains. Like one that of the most true. successful people, I, I like when I when I wrote that question out, I, I was the one that wrote it out from the uh, from from the from thing. The it was like the first person that came to mind was FKA Twigs. Because Ooh. when when I went to see her show uh, a few months back, it was evident that she was doing exactly what she wanted to be doing. It wasn't just she was getting herself out of there. She was getting all the mates out there and doing yeah, 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 shows yeah, yeah. with That's them true. That's and creating true. something more than the sum and of you're quite her own true. parts. Like, to be fair, what's really annoying is this is going to come out in the future and even now people are saying us, her success is based on her recent relationship or not so recent relationship, which is very, very sad because we saw... When did we see her before? Because we saw her like a year ago or something. Uh, it, was, it was the year before. Uh, so I, I saw her what, just and before, before Christmas last year. And that was before the relationship, year, I think. And you saw her the year before that. Yeah. In January before that. And, and it's just, just, she was so successful then and I was so impressed and I was, it was heaving and I could barely move and so many people were loving it so much. She was heaving or? <laughs> I, I, at two, oh, yes. <laughs> I have this sneaking suspicion that TK Maxx actually desperately longs to be a butcher. <laughs> And that she's just incredible at dancing. And everyone's like, no, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you were born to do this. Like, <laughs> Her songs are quite visceral. <laughs> TK Maxx. Yeah. yeah. For car twigs. For car twigs. Right, okay. <laughs> car twigs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that, that's, that, that's my answer. Man. And, and I suppose also like Terry Pratchett. Yes, very successful. I mean, that, that, I mean, after his death, that, that a wave of people that he touched just came out of the woodwork. Did what? Not in an Operation U Tree way. Mm. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like he, he was, he was insanely successful. Like he, he did exactly what he, he wrote exactly what he wanted for as long Created as he could. World. And then like left, I assume on his own terms. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah incredible man. Yeah. That, that's the sort of thing I consider a su uh, success. Like Kim Kardashian is just a money magnet, which I don't yes. really consider. I don't, I don't. There don't are different kinds of success. Or or I mean, Sorry. There are different kinds of success. No, yeah. absolutely. I know that you wouldn't value the one that she has gone for. And she I, has attained. And I, and I think what, what you believe to be success mm. kind of says a lot about you. Oh, in no a, doubt. In a certain, in a no certain doubt. way. But you so, can, so, you can so, appreciate a so, kind of success that you don't yourself seek. Um, yeah, I think definitely. Time. Oh, you mean a success in something that you you are not very good at? Like, I would never wish to be Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> but Johnny, you'd be so good at it. <laughs> You've got the arse for it, mate. Indeed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would never wish to go for that, but my lord. what Would I be interested to see what that's like? Hell yeah, I'm curious. What, so one, one of the big issues I've got with uh, Kim Kardashian's success in particular is the fact that she won't talk openly and freely and admit like where her success is rooted from. She is basically a porn star that's done extremely well for herself she was she was a basic nothing so socialite and then off the back of that one video with entirely sex, unfortunate sex tape ra rapper number 42 mm. um like she got the the uh, reality series and then from there has kind of that that's kind of created her empire though i detest her i'm not entirely sure that it's fair to sort of you know completely hinge such emphasis on one particular thing in someone's past. If, if we were to look at it in a certain way, then it, 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 not to the same extent because it's not as, as sort of ex explicit or, or illicit, really. But you could say, well, hang on, George Michael, arguably one of the better singers. He is actually a fantastic singer, yeah, you know, Incredible. other than performer. I mean, Wham's early material was hardly very sort of, you know, ooh, that's really, really sort of. I mean, I know it's, 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 it's a poor comparison because they're musicians, yeah. they made their own music. But I, I, off the top of my head, just trying to come up with th things that have been a little. It's, it, it's the fact that she won't talk about it, she won't acknowledge it, yeah. she won't admit it. Well, would you want to? Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was going to say. Like, you if you it's should. Something you, don't... you should admit where God, you come from. Defending Kim Kardashian. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Why should you admit where you come from? Uh, because that that's kind of played a very like significant part in like How where you hasn't gone. her not telling one played a significant part. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. like if she told it anyone, she'd if she'd she, lose the mystique. And if she sense. constantly referred she'd, to it, she'd be like she's surrounded bank in. Yeah, on. no, I'm I'm not saying she, if like, it was really released against her will, then that's a very different story and actually a more interesting one, more capable for us of empathy. She seems like an like, incredibly strong person if she's very able good to point, handle Johnny. the life that she currently has. No, there's a difference between brave and ignorant. I, I, I clearly don't know enough about Kim Kardashian. Is there? I, I, Maybe I should go. I, I should go. I should, I should go In one of them, research. you're holding a shield. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, 
when you first said the most successful person you can think of, I, all I thought was oh, Bill no. Gates. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Oh, 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 monetarily it's, it's, made a lot of sorry. money, but also in following his career, he's actually done a lot of good. He's still married to his wife. He still seems to have a happy marriage. He still has a many ki- yeah. a couple of kids that are happy. And- sorry, it's just a, it, it is awful semantics on my part. But the question is, in fact, when you think of the word successful. Who do you think of first? But, and what? Okay. Not, yeah, that's, but, not yeah. who is the most. No, that's, no, that's no, what no, I mean. No, that's no, what came to mind first of all for me. Because he, he, not only in his personal amazing. life, in his career, and in his humanitarian work, sure. he, he yeah. seems to be... I, th- I think I, I think of Bill Gates as for the for just because he's a well-known name. Yeah. yeah. If it's the first person I think of, sort of thing, it's it's not necessarily a, a measure of their success. It's just that they are successful. Not person. Much a celebrity, you know, in the sense yeah, of. Yeah, which is of, a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. That's no, fantastic. In a way, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's also because I don't know a lot of celebrities' names. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening to a podcast of um, Sir Ian, Mc- Ian McKellen. Um, I think it was a nerdist, and um, he just they they were discussing the uh, the thing about celebrity, and I know we're almost. Sliding off the sliding off the comment, but he talked about I've happens. forgotten the chap who first got to the top of Everest. I've forgotten his name. Boddington or I looked Hillary. it up. I looked it up today. Simon Hillary was it? And yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. Well, he, well, no, he, he went, he it was went his and, Sherpa, but he, he went and he went and hunted Bigfoot just afterwards. Really? <laughs> his next expedition after doing it was to go would and he, hunt Bigfoot. Would he be of? Would he? Would he be of an age where he would have met Syria McKellen at any point? Is it? I have no idea. Basically, he met someone who was on the top of Everest, and it was significant. And the way that Ian McKellen was talking to him uh, was almost meltingly celebrity. Like that was his version of successful. And what mm. was quite nice about the story of that guy is that when he was retired, he he retired and went and grew his little, he, he went and looked after bees and stuff like that. And he got a phone call one day from his son. He said, you right, Dad? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, how, how are you? What are you doing? He's like, I thought I might call you. I'm on the top of Everest right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a nice way around of it, like... Now one of the one of one of the people that were so revered because they got to the top of Everest. Now there's expeditions where people can obviously so, be so, trained. Well, so um, go, go. Let, let, let's go with Edmund Hillary. His son made it to Everest and called him and called him from the top of Everest. Oh no, that that's a fucking measure of success. You're so successful with what you've done. You got your jizz to the top of <laughs> Mount Everest. <laughs> God, I hope it was that bloke. But yeah, I didn't listen to the name. But yeah, I thought that was quite a nice Power story of success. Five thousand. <laughs> Artillery cock. <laughs> um, if we're if we're talking like what, what, what I just immediately associate or who I immediately associate with the word successful, um, you, you can you find myself going through the sort of typical plethora of like you know Isambard Kingdom Renown who I just mm. admire greatly, but that's mm. rather typical. Um, but then I, I, I think if it were to sort of personal association, I'd, I'd, it's, it's something of a topical one because a lot of people greatly dislike him, but I, I, I admire hugely uh, Sting, funnily enough. Yeah. Um, because I think that though so many people dis- dislike various aspects of all, just hate his music or anything like that, you know. Yeah, they're wrong. Which is absolutely fine. <laughs> You're wrong. But I, I, I greatly, greatly, greatly admire his career because he seems, everything he seems to have turned himself to, I like his output in the yeah. way that I like his acting. Yeah. I like his music. Yeah. I, I admire greatly that I could never really be bothered to do it, the amount of charitable work that he's done. Yeah. And I also, it's even down to small things, like for instance, his recent commentary against stuff like X Factor and Simon Cowell. Shit! I always I'd never actually say that there was because I'm sorry. One man boycott. <laughs> but it, I, I <laughs> desperately try not to publicise the man, but uh, it's just that what Sting said against him was was and the show was utterly fantastic. Um, and I, I I just you know I I, I just like it. Seems to be everything that I've seen of his is something that I am greatly je- uh, envious of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, another name that jumped into my brain as soon as you said success was David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, he gosh. will forever be cool. He of will never not be yeah. cool. Yeah. And yeah, he's only really done amazing work. There's a, there's a quote that 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 says I, I'm going to paraphrase it terribly. I, I don't. I won't search for it in in enough time. The quote that says, "If David Bowie, a bisexual ginger uh, cross dressing man, can be David Bowie, and you can listen to David Bowie, you're one up on David Bowie." Like, if you can use David Bowie as your inspiration and he can make it as he was, 
you're better than David Bowie. Oh, nice. You can, you've got yeah. one up on David Bowie. Not better than David Bowie. You've standing got one on the up shoulder. On you're standing yeah. on the shoulder of David Bowie. What can you achieve? It's like, yeah. <laughs> he has also rather scarily predicted so many mm. cultural sways and progressions. Uh, we were watching an interview recently where he, in the... Well, it was the release of Earthling, so that would have been 98, 99. Yeah. Uh, where he said, like, he's being interviewed by Jeremy Paxman, saying that, you know, what is it you're most excited about at the moment? And he's just saying, like, no, really, honestly, this stuff that's happening around the internet is just completely fascinating. And then goes off about the fact that you should be buying internet stock and this, that, and the other. It's sort of like, hang on. But then, I know that's, it's a vague thing to say, oh, of course, there's loads of people talking about it at that time. But no, the way he was talking about it, the manner in which he predicted its significance and complete revolution in, on a cultural basis was just so prescient mm. and on the money. And it, it, it just is sounds as testament to the man who has consistently managed to reinvent, almost personally be responsible for reinventing so many movements. Yeah. Yeah. Influence, yeah. yeah. Mm. Johnny, fucking Zoolander. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking awesome. Johnny, have you got a, uh, have you got a, a contribution to this? Yeah, one? two people came to mind. Um, the first person, <laughs> naturally, was Bruce Dickinson. Um, Yay! Yeah, it's a big Maiden <laughs> fan, Johnny. Um, not even just because of the music, but the fencing and the best-selling books and the fact that he has a pet parrot. And the I pilot. Mean, <laughs> and a beer. Oh, and the pilot and a beer, which is terrible, unfortunately. Yeah. But <laughs> oh, is, that, is that the trooper? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's terrible. Uh, um, right. <laughs> making a limited edition strong one, though. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be terrible, but really fucked up. And not that it's really <laughs> success, but getting through cancer is a pretty big achievement. Oh, Fuck God, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Your body um, fighting that, yeah. Is, yeah. is, is he... Now, because what didn't it? He's in the didn't it, Yeah, but didn't it uh, reappear recently? Or something? <laughs> no, not as far as I'm aware. God, it, hope... They caught it early. Yeah. He had chemo. He's all right as far as I know right now. He's just recovering. Right. New album's out September fourth. Double <laughs> touring next year. <laughs> <laughs> nice Double album, ninety minutes. <laughs> ninety minutes, motherfucker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on chemo, ninety minutes of recording on chemo. <laughs> Jesus. If you could turn Hal's face into a sound, nobody would want to hear it. Um. <laughs> in, in general, cheers, Johnny. I love you too. Welcome back to Turkey. <laughs> this is now the 14th episode. I think we know what that sound is. By now. <laughs> the sound of no whimsy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just desperately trying to sort of like... It's, it's yeah, the sound of part building. I know. Yes, yes. Good. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Um, but no, I, don't, I do I, admire him. Honestly, I, I, I honestly, mostly for his fencing, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and your other one, Johnny? Um, yeah, probably someone no one's ever heard of, but a, a folk artist called Chris Wood. Um, he's absolutely fantastic. He's been playing his music for the last like 25 years. He lives in the Cotswolds. Uh, he's very anti-city. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's really, I really admire somebody who can be consistent and can really stick with ah. what they believe. Because... I'm getting better at it, but I've been quite flitty. And I really like to see somebody that has been playing the same thing and just waited for people to get it. Ah. Uncompromising, yeah, it's probably, nice. There's probably about five million people who fall into that, that troop as well. I just, it's but, nice to see when it works. But this well, is the that's one exactly Johnny the loves. point, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's success. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Sweet. yeah, fair enough. Cool. cool. Beth, would you care to give us something from the hot yes. pot? May I, may I try the whiskey soon as I like rum? Well, there's a little snifter in my glass. Here you go. I'm going to hate oh. it, aren't I? No, it's, not, it's, it's really a very nice oh, whiskey. <laughs> It didn't even I get to her lips. Show. I love watching Beth drink oh, whiskey. Oh, my eyes burn. <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> Not the first time I've Smell heard it that. Smell it first. I close my eyes while it comes up to my face. It's lovely. <laughs> or that, I imagine, how. Face, neck and chest. <laughs> that is actually the nicest whiskey I've ever heard. And it still made you... <laughs> and it still made you make the noise... <laughs> Yeah, strong. Your face it almost turned inside out. <laughs> I think that's the shape of that glass. What's what kind of glass is it's that? A snifter. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a bell like a bell glass. The, All of the fumes just accumulated and then went. That's Whoa! the point. Bell that's a button glass point, that yeah. make the rocking world we'll go, go round. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So one from host pot was that hot it pot is hot pot. Yeah. So the hopo. This comes from. <laughs> <laughs> the hopo. <laughs> this comes direct from the hopo. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Your hopo running. Cheese it. <laughs> <laughs> the hopo pick poke test. Five oh oh. <laughs> go on, go on, do it. I'm going to take a run up with this. Um, this is from De Ola. De Ola. Um, what would have been the best and worst discovery from the recent Pluto flyby? Now, may I say, the word flyby just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> like the drive-by arguments. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I thought, I thought you were thinking about it more in the terms of someone flying by in a ship sticking an arm out the window and just shooting it up. No, that would a, be more horrible. Dwarf planet, are you? Looks like it all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yes, the best and worst discovery from the recent thing. I saw the pictures of what, the... It, what would have been yes. or what I'm, actually was. I'm, I'm, I'm split. Well, we don't no, know no, what, 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 what would have been. We don't work at NASA. I, I'm, I'm split with the worst. Um, that it's either that it actually turned out, turned out to not be there. <laughs> <laughs> That, that would have just a smudge on the lens of the Hubble and, telescope. Um, the, the other one, which I think is perhaps more horrible and kind of uh, more applies to sort of any any anyone with any Lovecraftian knowledge, but if it turned out to actually be uh, Yuggoth, oh, oh, okay, and and was the the fungus uh, the fungoid planet of the Mego. I'd quickly get a yellow sign tattoo straight away. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'm changing sides, guys. Fuck you. <laughs> um, the best would have been is if just as it went by. It could just about pick up, carved into the uh, in, into like the landscape. No, actually, we are a planet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think best, best and worst. Best would probably be a massive, proportionate pair of floppy ears <laughs> um, and a big wet nose. Yeah. <laughs> but um, can I just add rather just a little bit of like side interest that I just found really touching? There's probably loads of people that know this, but I didn't. No. Um, that okay. Um, the, the guy who, as it were, discovered Pluto uh, in the turn of the century, so the early part of the 20th century, um, rather lovely. He, he he got his daughter to name it, and his daughter named it Pluto. You know, God of the Underworld and everything like that. But it's also it ties in with his initials, which are P and L. And it's the first two letters. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, the can someone tell me the the, the, the name of, of the craft that is the other you know, probe that has, has been sent? Oh, we'll, we'll let's call it Bob for now. Yeah, but Bob. Thank you, Bob al- the probe. Also, Bob the probe. <laughs> Where's Sounds Bob like going? an imperative. Where, where, where's, where's, Bob, where's Bob going in your dwarf planet? <laughs> um, right, so one of the nicest things, that one of the things that that probe contained uh, were a little bit of the ashes of the man who discovered Pluto. Wow. Is that not mm. rather yeah, bloody was, lovely? I think that's, just, that's astonishing. That's just sort of... It, if you, I just, That's where I wish time travel existed, just to go back and go... Not going to take you with us, but I just want you to know you will pass Pluto at some point physically. Like, exactly. <laughs> it yeah. would have actually blown his mind. Yes. Like, it's yeah. absolutely yeah. wonderful. He would have died all over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the best and worst for me. Did you already say those? Uh, uh, wor- worst would, would probably be um, uh, Jade Goody. Oh, my... What, you just found her reincarnated on the face She's of Pluto? She's clinging onto the back going, Still like... found he's angular! <laughs> almost like space Odyssey. <laughs> like... Just face honestly like the baby. Like, just, 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 just as she goes past, I didn't know he was racist! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, my best and worst, the worst I'm going to steal from whatever the hell's been floating around uh, Facebook recently. Oh, is, damn it, you beat me to it. Yeah, the picture <laughs> of it uh, looking like the Death Star. That was probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would, be, that the would worst. be the worst, yeah. The best would be Wallace and Gromit, big day out. Oh. <laughs> That it would be Wallace well, and Gromit. Not the sad robot. Not the Don't robot. even. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the sad robot on Big Day Out and the uh, horse drowning in the uh, smog. What, like, the robot's sand. riding. Uh, 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 what's the, the horse from the uh, um, artifact. Not Artreyu. Artifact. Because uh, Atreyu. Atreyu. No, Atreyu, Atreyu is the is the right, that's right. But uh, Artax. Artax. Artax, yeah. So yeah, the, the 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 horse drowning in the swamp of sadness, and the robot who's sad, who wants to ski on the big day out, wants and Gromit are just now, me- jerk me to tears every time. Now there's a horse that would have been saved by just a quick cheeky pill. <laughs> Mate, cheer the fuck up. Have this. <laughs> <laughs> Munted. <laughs> As he gets the swamp, rides around, does a pirouette. Dying, are you, Trey? Don't care. Someone hug me. <laughs> but wouldn't that be fun if they did the flyby and then all of a sudden it'd be like, what's wrong with Wensleydale? <laughs> <laughs> so what about yours, Tom? Uh, well, you got my worst one, which was the, the <laughs> Facebook memes. However, I did see quite... I hate writing on facebook in image format i can't stand it i said this in the last podcast however the one about you dumped me four years ago and now you're driving by my house <laughs> oh wow uh, was actually pretty good That's oh amazing. no no okay okay so the one of those i really like was it was a it was a four panel um comic and the first one was just uh Bruto with a little sad face on it and it just like with a tagline saying uh for four billion years and then the second panel is it looking up expectantly 
And then the third one is it just watching the probe going by, going, oh, hey, how's it going? Lovely to see you. Oh, no, I've got to go. Bye. And then yeah. the fourth one is just him going, oh, again. <laughs> I fucking loved that one. Anyone else? Andy, did you? Worst or oh, best, best. I don't know. I'm I'm a man of of simple means. I'd 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 quite like there to be like you said, like like car- carved into carved into the planet, sort of like, like no, I am a planet anyway, or something like that. I I just like it to be a big sort of I don't know alien cock and balls, which is sort of evidence of aliens have been here nearby, but they've been here on a lads drinking trip. <laughs> 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 There's a traffic cone right next to it. <laughs> that, that would be my absolute best. That's made but, me think of like that. Could, it, maybe Pluto is the practice ground for crop circles. <laughs> <laughs> Advanced level scouting badge yeah, yeah. for aliens. Oh, no. <laughs> you got that trajectory wrong. Sorry, it. we're going to have to patch that before daddy, we go daddy, daddy, daddy. I just got my grief Pluto badge. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my 200 yards genocide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think worst worst would have been if the uh, if the the comment. Uh, uh, sorry, comment. The uh, probe had just gone sort of like to Pluto, and it, as it got halfway past Pluto, it just gone dunk, and that had been a, a wall, and it just like <laughs> slid down. The wall oh my god! Like the the universe, shot. the yeah. universe only goes as far as halfway past Pluto, <laughs> and it has, it has all been put there. As, as Beth said, Truman Show, you sort of asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's if, amazing. If that, that would be the absolute worst thing ever to know to know that we've actually been there and done it as much as possible. Oh my god, that was like, so good. Like game. Completed. There's, there's only so far we can <laughs> smash it. Yeah. yeah, all right, fair enough. Oh my god. And if I don't see you, good evening and good night. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Good I afternoon, know, good I evening, good night. I know, Thank I was about to say good morning and it was wrong. Anyway, uh, we should probably. Uh, Very, pay- a good morning. topic, that one. That was a good topic, but Alex looks like he wants to kill us. Alex is hardly awake. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just let him fall asleep, oh, guys. Johnny, what, asleep. what would you, what would have been your best and worst <laughs> discoveries? Fall asleep. <laughs> no, that would be awesome. Are we going to have live oh, fucking with you. Alex whilst he's asleep? <laughs> <laughs> that is a solo video I don't want to see. Do you not want <laughs> fucking with Alex. <laughs> Go on, Johnny, what you got? This is a hard one for me, but I, I guess I've got the two that came into my head. Um, the best one, I guess, would be if we... <laughs> Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> Yep, a colony. Um, <laughs> no, if we flew by and there was a colony of Pluto, the dog, just there, all happily like looking at you, expectantly, Amazing. that would be lovely. Um, the the worst one would be if you were there and then it just breathed a little bit and then charged. <laughs> <laughs> Like <laughs> I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Because Pluto's going to come and get us. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> yes. Pluto gonna get ya. Pluto gonna get ya. Oh, me of dwarf planet. We have our first Pot Topic podcast nightmare inducing lullaby. <laughs> if you don't listen to Pot Topic podcast, Pluto's going to come and get you. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> Someone Photoshop that shit. <laughs> Yeah, it'll probably be me. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, I got a job. Pluto chasing the Earth around Saturn. <laughs> Stop it! Leave me alone! I don't like it! <laughs> Stops off at Mars with his big cock and balls for a quick blowjob in Mars's face. A quick blowjob in Mars? I, I, I just rush, rushes in. It's hard been enough. years, mate. It'd go quite <laughs> Light years. Then about your own head straight to the Light years. Lovely. Tom, I believe that's time for something from Paul Pot. No, that one. Pol Pot. Cold. Yes, Tom. No, you're right. Get no, with it's the fucking plan. Yeah, you're quite right. <laughs> Didn't you listen to the rules when you narrated them? When I wrote, <laughs> no, I was pissed when we came up with the, the premise of this podcast. <laughs> Hence why we drink whiskey every go. Sure. Hey, it's Captain Sitbeard. You right, Dom? How's Hello, going? Dom. Uh, so we've got... It's, it's a little weird to ask them questions. I do like, like, it's, it's like to gap. say, like, hello. Uh, All right, Dom. How's it going? I like, got really awkward there for a second. No, oh, no. shit, he didn't say anything about... Uh, uh, how's it going? <laughs> Quick, onto the question. Mm. No, no, I like to think of this podcast as like a prank answering scene message. So you just like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Oh, I, I heard... message off the beat. I heard a wicked story about uh, our Existential captain, Tom Tom uh, Sick Beards the other day. Oh, go on, I, I, please, I was working please. with his future brother-in-law and he said to me, he's like, oh, did you hear what happened to Dom recently? He's like, no, no. Um... Yeah, he was he was sort of working somewhere else in the house, and he, he thought he heard, like, mice and the wolves. So he went up to his attic, where the sound was the loudest, and I thought, do you know what? I'll just see if I can find my way and sort of attack the wall somewhat, and it collapsed, and then millions and millions of wasps just came out. <laughs> and, and it's all right, he got away with only four stings. 
Oh, I, mean, I feel I feel kind of bad for him because the council have just said, oh, do you know what? That's third story. We're going to go up to two. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Can I just can I just say about wasps? Uh, what Hearing wasps. My mum was walking around my house uh, when I lived at home with my parents for ages saying that she could hear something. Uh, it was driving her crazy. She was wandering around for like a f- good few days, half a week, wandering around thinking that she could hear this sound. Eventually, she found the source of the sound. There were wasps in the back garden on like a big post <laughs> at the end of the back garden. Right. And she claims to this day that the sound that was driving her wild was for the wasps chewing. <laughs> they, they do chew kind of yes, loudly. Yes, but from the other end of the garden. <laughs> no, fair, fair enough. There, there's also me, the, the, me and my dad have never, never, never agreed with her, and she's always maintained quite that rightly. That was it. There, it's a bit rightly. suspicious. The, the, <laughs> oh, oh, King of Puns has come onto the podcast. Um, and of course, there's the experience I had with wasps, which was um, it was soon after we moved in. Did this they sting is... your foot? Oh no, well, that happened once, but that, that was an unrelated incident. Um, no, this was soon after we moved in. I think this was after like our first party or first kind of all nighter, and this is when Johnny was still living here and BM. And um, I I went to bed and it was really hot, so I opened my window and I hadn't turned my light off yet, um, not oh. paying attention to the fact that there were these there was a wasp nest uh, in, like under the eave near near my room. So the wasps, despite it being like night, they were really attracted to the light. Mm-hmm. So as I'm getting to bed, I was oh I climb into bed and I'm just thinking about you know, oh do you know what I'll have to turn off the light. So get up and then I start hearing a noise and then a wasp just is there on like one wall it's like oh shit and then i turn around and there's eight more of the fuckers just buzzing over my head and obviously i'm still quite drunk at this like, how do i know so i instantly ran out the room i sleep naked so i ran out the room completely start bottom naked closed the door immediately grabbed the duct tape to tape up like the gaps in the door and the keyhole to make sure they can get out and Bjorn wanders out into the hall and just finds me there, starboard and naked, just like just taping my door up. Are you, are you right, mate? I just turn around and say, Yeah, wasps. And <laughs> let, let the end that. <laughs> oh, you could have done with my latest purchase off of Amazon while right, reasonably wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say drunk. No, I was fucking wasted. <laughs> so, have you got one of those electric pooters? I have not only the tennis racket electric pooter, I also have a mini like fly killer that you'd usually have in a kitchen sort this of thing. This is horrible. <laughs> yeah, but they're, no, I they're needed good, it. They're good I needed when, like, something big gets in them. Oh, yeah, the big crackle. Yeah, yeah they, the they crackle smack. and then they it's set like a the lightning fire strike. <laughs> no, I, 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 need, I, I, def, I definitely needed that shit because, like, the only... Like, I, before I taped up the door, I went and got a pot of honey and left it on the side in the hope that maybe they'd all get in and get stuck. This didn't work, so I had to go in the next day dressed as heavily as I could in the crushing heat with a, with a, like, a vacuum cleaner just going Aah! trying to like suck them all up <laughs> I actually have helpful advice with wasps if you want to trap them so build a trap or whatever just like a coke bottle with That's a, a good top turn upside down <laughs> now you can trap them build a but, trap or whatever <laughs> in order, to, a, in order to attract them you take a shot of wheat beer or ale a shot of vinegar a shot of sugar syrup and a gun, and then a shot of fruit <laughs> juice. I have caught like four huge containers full of wasps in the last day. Like they are overflowing. T- right. Oh, yeah. Before we get back to the pub. question, see, let, let, let's let's go to like your birthday present. How? This is the thing. I, I'm I'm one of these peculiar people. I'm afraid to say that I I re- I actually like wasps. Um, because I find them utterly fascinating. Hence the uh, EP title, or album, album title. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Because yeah. they're utterly pointless? Yes. because they're, no, they're, because war I, machines. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're just pointless war machines. So they're, 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 <laughs> they don't create... Anyway, but I won't bore everyone with that. But it's just more that I, I was given, because of my business partner, he, he, he knows of my sort of affinity and love of wasps, that he actually gave... Because he found a wasp nest in his uh, attic at his last place where he used to rehearse yeah. with the band and everything like that. And it was just... Well, I, I rehearsed there with him when I was guesting for his band. Damn. And... Uh, it was just this odd thing that it was this regular thing. You'd do a song, 
and then you'd finish the song and then you'd kill the wasp that we're trying to uh, you know uh, <laughs> You do another song Metal. and by that time another five had turned up and it would be increasing numbers and you know how far you got into the practice by how many wasps are in between each song it's this very handy very painful timing system <laughs> quite, quite, quite literally a wasp keeper it was, it was, <laughs> a wasp timekeeper yeah but um, however he, he, he knew my, my sort of love of wasps and stuff like that so he gave me as a birthday present a jar of wasps oh I remember this um, yeah and I still have it and there's this it, it's, every now and again you hold a party and someone comes around and they're kind of like, whoa hang on that's a jar and I love their reaction so yeah. Wait, 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 it's a jar, wasn't it? It really bothers. Like, dude, not only is there a thick wall that is bolted down of glass surrounding them, they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, but they're wasps! Yeah, yeah. Ah, what are they gonna do? <laughs> it's like, well, I like it the idea of lovely. the wasp ghosts coming out and somehow <laughs> getting out in the middle of the night and to be like. Anyway, listeners, that's, go that's... to Eulogy Media, listen to Dam and Talonas. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So, Shall we um, actually get on with the topic? Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> so but this is from I mean, Captain Sickbeard Dom. Quick, quick, quick lesson. That, that's, that's how we, we, we went that's back That's how to you there. start a topic without even, like, just, just by existing. Well done, Dom. If this is well, about these, topic. it'd be really yeah. ironic. <laughs> so, Captain Sickbeard. Musical numbers done in the death slash black metal style. Please don't bring up baby metal. Oh, shit, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there's that. Oh, shit, who did it? There's a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, black metal version of uh, that uh, Mary Poppins song. Um, Do you mean as, uh, as in the guys that have... There's been a team of people who have been doing the sort of death metal versions of, of, of a lot of Disney stuff and everything Yes, like yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not just that they've been doing... You see... Unfortunately, but, uh, this kind of subject is a bit, with a certain amount of methods, myself included, it, it, after a while it gets a bit like, oh, so you've done an extreme metal version of a non-extreme metal song, and it just gets like, but you you could, it's like rapping, it, like there was in a time where the ubiquitous rap that existed in all pop songs, it's like, yeah, oh, see so you're rapping, okay. So it's just another format sort of thing, but it's, but it's just it's, a novelty that's that's there as well. It's yeah, done. it is precisely that. Yeah, Un unfortunately, how this is the topic. This is the topic. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry to say it is. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, have you got yeah. any particular favourites that you can think of? What you mean, as as in of of of? Let, let's go with extreme metal versions of of others of, of songs. Uh, I, I I'm gonna need to think about it because I I tend not really to like them very much. I mean, how no, no, what, no, no, there is yes, there's a very good one um, by a band called Dominion. Who was signed to Peaceville in the uh, mid '90s, and they did a cover of "Painted Black" uh, by uh, which wasn't the same band. Sound they, they they covered "Painted Black" and uh, "Tears for Fears" tune um, "Shout," mm -hmm. okay. and uh, they were surprisingly good. Rather than oh, you're just doing the death metal shtick thing and not really changing yeah. that much, just putting a lot of double kick in it and gruff vocals. But they actually treated it really very well. Cool. Um, the, the two I can think of is, is one that, that comes on here uh, quite often is um, oh, Cradle of Filth's version of... Um, Hello Be Thy Name? No, Temptation. Oh, right. oh Temptation. That's not uh, a musical. No, I know. It's it's just, it's stupid. And it's, yeah. it's, it's nice brainless They thumb. did that with Liv Christine, didn't they? Yeah, that's it, right. Yeah. Quite possibly. Um, and there's also, was it, An was it Anchorhead who did um, a oh, Star Wars Oh, fuck yeah. Album. Like, oh shit, what's it called? I've got it on my fucking phone. <laughs> um, but that, that, was, that was quite, oh. in, in, in particular, their, their, their version of the Imperial Death March. Yeah. Or the Shred Imperial March. 4. Shred 4. Which I, which oh, I that's so mistook good. in one of your cars. Somewhat, no, I think it was Dave. It was Big Dave's car. That, that you put it on, it's like, yeah, right, really, really weird, like, album title. It's got Sh Shred Herazard. I thought that was quite clever. It's like, no, I just completely misread that. It's like misreading the uh, Danzig uh, live album. Of, I thought it was demonstrative, and it's Demon Sweat Live. But yeah, yeah, Shred Episode 4, is, so is, uh, 4 is, is, is pretty damn good. It's, it's phenomenal. <laughs> it tells the entire story good. of A New Hope in Shred. <laughs> Johnny. I can't think of one for this. May I modify the topic ever so slightly? He's never, never been done before. Like. Johnny, Johnny, I'm going to have to. The to sorry, the topic well, is I'm, black metal versions of musical songs. Black metal or death metal versions. Neither are Andy at yeah. all. I don't know any of either of those genres. Well, I'm going to have to modify slightly. I was going to turn it slightly to normal songs that we would like to hear done in ah, a death metal or black metal nice. stuff. Because it's something that I think Taz originally came up with it. The idea that we would do a, a, a heavy metal version, at least, of the Nokia theme tune. 
That would be incredible. Oh no, yeah, no. The, the idea was it starts with the boom, and then it's like actually you could do it with like Nokia owns your soul. You could do it a bit like in Dupti. You could have like the Middle Eastern flutes playing the tune. Oh, oh, nice. I'm glad you like Indukti. They are Fucking absolutely hell. phenomenal. Um, can, can I just save some face publicly though? I uh, purely because it, it concerns people I do know. I would like to apologise on air. For, I, I, I'm not disputing the brilliance of Ten Mask Men and everything they did. That was very, very good and very, very funny. But that was when the joke was very funny. You, 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 you do actually know Ten Mask Men. That, no. but yeah. it, it's, yeah. they're, they're, they're a band that exclusively did death metal, comedy mm. death metal covers. It was very funny. And they were the yes. one that famously did Hit Me Baby One More Time in a death metal. Uh, you, you will have heard well. it. Yeah. They did it great. It was really, really good. But yeah, I just remember, yeah, Jay and everyone. and yeah. I mean, and Johnny, we also had this pipe dream about doing a metal version of the third movement of Moonlight Sonata. Oh, yes. No <laughs> do, you, do you remember when we were really able to do that? Do oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, we, we, were, we were right there. No way. Um, I may... Sorry, Tom. No, um, I may modify also, and I was hoping at some point I could bring this up, but I don't know if uh, Hal agrees that um, he would mind if this is brought up with his name, but one of our friends, um, when he was touring, I think this might have been in Germany or somewhere in Europe, he was touring with... Um, uh, 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 what? Sorry, Joe, I'm trying to work out who... Could you whisper into the headphones? <laughs> oh, oh, marvellous. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 right, okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you mind if I, is, is that what the, You are the, better at telling stories, so yes. Right, okay. Um, uh, there was a, uh, I'm not actually going and to apparently mention... Apparently she's better at drinking cider, because that's exactly what she went for as soon as she stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just enjoy this. <laughs> the, 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 there was a particular artist um, that is, is, is a German artist, and I'm going to leave his name up, because uh, otherwise it would just be a bit incriminating, but yes. um, our very, very good friend and flatmate, Andy Ongley, was, he's an exceptional guitarist and was used as a, as a session guitarist for a particular German goth industrial artist who decided for about two years that he was in fact uh, uh, vocationally called to black metal and decided to record those. <laughs> it was completely ridiculous and went the whole shebang, grew his hair long, got the quartz paint on and everything like that and it wasn't fantastically brilliant. But um, our very good flatmate uh, who was good enough, uh, sorry, go for it, uh, uh, the, yeah, and, uh, yeah, Sorry, uh, we've been too particular. Now, every, uh, anyone who knows us knows exactly who we're talking about. Well, then, yes, but they will know, and that's fine. But um, so that basically, he went out on tour, and this this sort of great big, huge European and partly world tour of of this this new angle for the band. Of course, all the goth fans hated it, but he was up there, and, it's like, and he was explained. <laughs> Before they were about to go on stage at this enormous arena drome thing in Germany where all of the sort of home fans were amassed to see this guy and it was like, oh, well, let's just give it a go. I know we don't like black metal, but blah. And uh, then you go out to play. Uh, this is the section here. They will be having um, the drum solo. And now... After that, you shall play your guitar solo. And it's like, uh, Andy said, uh, oh, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not a lead guitarist. No, I, I don't, I don't play solos. Uh, nevertheless, you shall be playing a guitar solo here. So he just, just like really, like, oh, I've got like minutes to prepare. And he just assumed, this guy assumed that, well, he must have a guitar, so he's a guitarist. So he kind of did the gig and then said, like, shit, the drum solo happened. And then after this, like, <gasps> what are we doing? So thousands and thousands of people, the first thing that came to mind is like, Fuck it. No, 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 no. Yeah, a pinch I'm on it. And they just went mental. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> Fucking Corey Street, love it. Oh, I've got, I've got to uh, put out a quick shout out to my boys Haken because oh, I, yeah. I know, I know it's been done to death. But when I went to um, see them uh, live at the board, uh, borderline. Um, they were playing. Uh, the, it was when it was when they just released uh, visions. Uh, they're playing through the entirety of that. And there's this one song where it kind of breaks down into almost a bit of a chip tuney sound. And uh, they'd obviously taken note of this. So when playing it live, they started. They, they did this little boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -boop -a -doop, and then seamlessly transitioned into one of the most perfect Mario medleys I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. Yes, it amazing. was fucking flawless. And more than that, it was virtuosically done. It was incredible. Oh, that they're an incredible me, band. 
the, the um, Japanese absolutely. guy that you can watch on YouTube doing the Mario theme on an electric guitar that's turned up the game massively. Oh, it's phenomenal. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, no, that's Tetris. No, it's no that's Mario. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I know staying in a bedroom with me has educated you enough now. <laughs> I know. You, you actually know it's the Mario when theme. I feel what the are you bed saying? Move. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Uh, another topic. Can I say one more thing? I was just yeah, going to yeah. say, should we actually go it to just the a, topic? It just occurred to me it would be really nice to hear a lounge version of Antiphon. <gasps> yeah. Oh, make it happen. That's a talent ass track. Just like the How? morning. The, the, the reason Deep I was, I was within. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's just quizzing that because the thing is, we basically do do lounge versions of everything of everything we do as part of the practice when one of us is just waiting and the other wasn't. By the way, as a segue, I thoroughly love your Easter song. Incredible. Beast. Oh, Be- but which one? There, there, there's that two. One. That, that no, I've only heard that one. Okay, cool. Excellent. Oh, I'll, thank you. I would say as well, another great thing that hasn't been made yet is a death metal version of the producers where they're actually putting on a rock show. <gasps> Oh no, because that will be like we will we will rock they're, you. They're basically that would be a shame. They're tr- they're downloading. <laughs> they're, they're running download, and they need to put on oh, the, the, the festival that's going to kill it. Oh, what was that? They want Sorry, to stop doing download that. after all these that. years. I don't have a problem with them at all. I love them to bits, actually. It's just too easy to use. Yeah, yeah, that, that was quite <laughs> That was harsh. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I quite... Oh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Taz, have a topic. Here's one from the hot pot. And Tom, I can only assume you were fucking smashed when you wrote this. Brilliant. Because <laughs> it's on a tiny piece of roughly folded paper and I can, it's barely legible. But here we go. Stereotypical Asians, the best race? Okay, I think what I was... I think that, How fast are they running? I think, what, I think what we've got here is me thinking of the stereotype. Split. They're good at math and they're studious and like pe- positive stereotypes we should turn this into. What, your favourite posi- positive stereotype? They're my, they're just, my favourite positive stereotype. Just, do, do, do their you know stereotype what? is they're, I'm, they're very I'm, studious. I'm actually going to take this sideways. It's, it's almost Asians. Um... It is, in fact, this came up recently. Uh, the best race uh, are uh, Belasians. I'm, I'm not really into eugenics. I believe that all men are equal. But the hierarchy of humanity goes Belasians, everyone else. And if you're unaware of, of like what like what the term Belasian refers uh, refers to, it means um, a child created by, by Blaze uh, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> like um well a, never <laughs> sort of a black parent <laughs> it's a child created by a black parent and an asian parent this is why we're trying to get Actually, I don't mean that. this is why i particularly am on a quest to um basically get diola to have sex with kimmy who it's is extremely cute their lot- children would look like royalty oh my god they're wonderful just so i can have an asian a blasian army <sighs> That I can just pick when they're eighteen. They Jesus look Charles, like I'm, which one's the prettiest? I'm trying to I'll go for that one. A black Asian baby that looks like Prince Charles. That's. <laughs> <laughs> they would look like Amory. Does anyone remember Amory? No. She was. No, sorry. That's like a colonial nightmare. Uh uh uh. <laughs> just one thing. You know, it, it, oh no, no, what's it called? <laughs> just one thing. Uh, that was um. Uh, it's this one thing that got me tripping. It's this one thing that got me tripping. You did it's this one thing that's all baby feeling. It's this one she, thing you did. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't she die on a roller coaster that went no, out that's of the planet? No, that's Aaliyah. That's Aaliyah. <laughs> <It's with A. laughs> that's Aaliyah. She was African American, um, and Amory uh, is Asian and uh, African American, and she is stone cold hot. If that could possibly be possible, <laughs> there's, 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 I've, I've, I've never met like any sort of person that's just more the winner of the genetic lottery. The thing is, are they're, we they're not... stunning. They tend to be really wonderful people. Holy they shit. they tend to be really intelligent. I've, All those I've met, I've they're worked just, out. So she is I, basically just, uh, rule me. She is that's going to, to be the <laughs> warhammer that we use against the Asian schoolgirls. The Kawhi Illuminati. Is, it, is this how we break the? Is this how that's, we... There's one thing cuter, and that's ablation. Yeah, but we'd have to militarise them, and that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if Look, I there's, ask, there's, is there's... there such a thing as a positive stereotype? No, because I think we are literally... There is the we black are li- guys have big dicks. There. No, 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 no. Well, no, because that, that, that mean that the black guys who, who don't, don't have big dicks, dicks then are unreasonable expectation? Uh, yes. But it still gets them laid. 
And this but it balances is, out what? with the Asian stereotype. Oh yeah, because that's the be all and end all. This is this is <laughs> yes. the one. It doesn't balance <laughs> itself out in a kind of yeah, stereotype does, karma, does it? Okay. I think this oh, all sorry. kind of I think this all kind of fucks us up because even though we're being thoroughly positive, geographical equilibrium, Al. we're being thoroughly positive. Um, we are still exoticizing people, which is not fair and not right. <laughs> no, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, I I I, I say I say what I say. With, we're getting with, excited about people that aren't us. But the thing is, they are us. Yes, it's just yeah, they've ab- got absolutely. different delineated... Yeah. I, 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 am, I, I say it with a, a little bit of uh, uh, tongue-in-cheek. It's or, massive oral tongue-in-cheek. Oral glossitization. Oh. There's a neologism. <laughs> 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 Thank you, racist things that I'm saying. Isn't that lovely? Well, wow, this is bad quite... radio. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Pot Topic Podcast. Hey! If and, Fox News had a station. <laughs> and coming up next on Speech Problem FM <laughs> is the weather winning. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <tongue in cheek. laughs> <laughs> That's the man who doesn't have a speech defect, but he got in into the studio thinking that he did, and everyone just didn't wouldn't tell him because they, he couldn't understand. <laughs> have speech defects, I'm sorry to say. There's nothing wrong with having a speech defect. Well, no, I mean, you can't speak wrong, but does that mean that you get language wrong? Is that wrong? Therefore, is it wrong? Is it a positive stereotype? I don't know. <laughs> Edit point. I don't think we can use any of this topic so far. It's no, it's, no it's, it's it's all right. It's, it's a weird topic, Tom. Is, I don't think it? we can use. Can any you of tell this I was topic? drunk? I, I, well, I prefaced it with saying it was you were clearly open smashed. For you to end on such so many questions. <laughs> I was I was going to try and <laughs> <to> be <laughs> behind everything. I'm <laughs> answering it. No. Have, you, have you got something to say? No, I was going to I'm tickling rhetoric here. My favourite positive stereotype because that's what you changed the thing to. Let's go with that. And then all the stereotypes I picked weren't particularly positive. No, they okay. weren't my favourites. So, there, there, so there's all, there's I was having trouble. I was, I was having trouble. Yeah, but the ones that I was picking were just like, like Russians like to drink vodka. Yeah, well, I'm you... okay with Russians drinking vodka. That's that's in my mind. That's a positive. I like drinking vodka. But, 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 I, but, but, I, but then, as opposed to everyone in Russia drinks vodka. But then, the if you were to then serve uh, vodka to uh, a Russian who's a recovering alcoholic. You know, there's the downside of the stereotype. Got, it's just, it's so, just like, for instance, got, what are they doing one, around your house, Taz? <laughs> Why is a Russian recovering alcoholic turning up around your house? Um, the sawmill. We also buy lots of bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone wants some crocodile? <laughs> no, I mean, for that, that's, that's the thing. Like, any, any, stereotype, uh, any stereotype can, uh, like, doesn't matter how harmless it seems, can eventually just be, like, a complete because, piece of shit. Because, yeah, because sweeping They tried to serve me work. tea once. Well, I was well pissed off. <laughs> you mean yeah, like that one? That, that's what I was going to say. Like, no, there, I, I, I there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with the idea that, oh, all English like to eat cucumber sandwiches without butter. But, but, if, you, fucking lovely, but if you go somewhere and you're served that shit, fuck that. Oh, no, fuck, no, no, no. Fuck Fuck that stereotype oh, and fuck those people. Fuck off, but no, I'd eat them. Absolutely. What if you got the crust removed? Jeez, but- butterless <laughs> cucumber sandwich. And, and, and those people, and those people that serve them to you, would probably be happy that they gave the English people some cucumber sandwiches. Be perfect. Yeah, if, I, I never, what's next? Gone. Absolutely fine about it. I'm yeah. not eating bread at the moment, but fuck Where it. Where the I'll, hell I'll did the fry up? All right, fine. Yeah, yeah, that's my bloody fry. <laughs> fine. Three some poor people. I feel like hunting them. <laughs> Marvelous. <laughs> Have you seen my teeth? <laughs> oh, you can't see them for the tea. <laughs> Get off my Boston. <laughs> <laughs> cool, shall we? Uh, shall New we, topic? Andy, yeah, let, let's have something from Pol Pot, shall we? Absolutely. May, may, maybe our listeners will provide something more sensible. <laughs> <Top> <laughs> <of> Bollocks, <laughs> they will. <laughs> Both of them are not prepared to commit to that much. <laughs> Podcast is over, I'm going home. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Mum and Dad, you've been great for listening. <laughs> Tom, you've only given yourself the worst editing job. I was so drunk when I wrote that. No, I no, really it's, mate, mate, so it's, drunk it's, it's all right. It. No, it's, it's, it's keep it. Edit out the clap. Just understand that what you've done is you've rolled your pain. No, 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 because I awesome. don't want to be. I don't want to be criminalised for the podcast. Darling, they're not going to come and arrest you for your friends saying that Blasians are pretty. Yeah, they will, because some of them are really ugly. Oh yeah, that's nice, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's egalitarian and egalitarian. Egalitarianism. You're going to guillotine them. For oh, fuck's sake, egalitarianism in action. I think I find that's my eagle guillotine. <laughs> Ah, fuck you, French man! I can fly higher and I can chop your balls off lower! Fuck you! Up the people! Down, Louis! Andy. <laughs> I forgot the whimsy sign today, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs>
You got a whimsy sign. Is it made of diamond? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> James. Whimsy. Says. Well, that's how it's spelled. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've had one from James before. Right, lovely. Uh, Hello, James. <laughs> I, I do. I do. How, how you doing? <laughs> I'm going. I'm telling you now. That's I'm going to enjoy this topic. Uh, stand up or sit down to wipe. Oh come on, we've oh, done this. Mother, oh, <laughs> yeah. We, no, we, we did this. We did this years ago. Over what, like in MySpace or did something. We did this, no, yeah, yeah, no, we yeah. did it in public we, on Facebook. No. <laughs> yeah, but we've it's not done it for the places. podcast. Oh well. Okay. So I mean, we we have some we have some standards and we have some sitters. This is clearly someone who knows us very personally. Yeah. They know clearly, how we yeah. wipe our clearly. own arse. So, 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 quick show of hands, citizen wipe. No, uh, citizen that won't work in a podcast. Oh, well, well, damn it! This we'll it's the it. po- topic podcast. We'll Allow it, it, blood. <laughs> right. Go on. Who sits? I'm, I'm, who sits I'm a sitter. I'm a sitter. Who sits, sitter. Who sits down? Up, really? Sits down to wipe. Sits down to wipe. Oh my god! I've just realised I'm actually terribly wrong in doing that, and I don't like discussing my laboratorial habits in here. But however, nevertheless, in and I will, <laughs> I will, I will let you know that in defence of my wife and my in-laws, I am now a hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't say, fucking high five me. You ruined it. my life. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's just point out that around the room, the only people that didn't raise their hands to sitting down to wipe was me and my sister, because that's clearly how we've been taught to stand up. Because the Brian kids were beaten with sticks as children. That's why I can, they I, stand I can, up. I can only... <laughs> taught to, correctly. To, to I, no, 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 I can, or more evolved. I can only assume <laughs> it's because, like, when you're doing something disgusting, you want to be as far away from your feet as possible. <laughs> no, that's, that's the only thing I can assume. <laughs> Although, to be fair, <laughs> since finding out that I'm one of the few people who stand up to wipe their ass, I have adopted a squat wipe before I stand up to oh, them. Oh, traitor! So you're a hybrid. I think. I think so, Tom. I've seen now... the benefits of both arguments. Have, have, have and I'm, oh, he's I'm, faltering. I'm, and I'm yes. making. And I'm he's, making he's gone soft, the yes. best. Tom, have have we now essentially you've making the sort of yin yang out of out of you've sort of in brother-in-law is sympathy in some sort of way can, and not can, disgusted. Can, yeah, you've convergently this, hybridized, this is, which, which is us wasted the other night. Is this actually laboratorial synchronicity? This is like yeah, the equivalent of periods syncing up. Well done, guys. Yeah. Don't you dare, wife of mine, hug yourself in glee when I'm discussing how exactly no I won't stand for this so I will sit now first <laughs> and then stand this, up with this I will not put well <laughs> there we go I, but apart from when you do after the sitting bit I would be really interested people you're not going to watch people I'm in the community anyone. just Tell us how weird we are, first of all, for how to fake this topic. Let's let's confirm the post pictures if you wish. People wipe their asses sitting down. If there's anyone else out there who stands up to wipe their ass, contact us. And 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 maybe it's just me and my sister. Are we like an outreach program? And and everybody else mail in to give abuse to Tom and and Beth for being weird for for standing up. Emails at (laughs) pottopicpodcast.com or submit to our community (laughs) wall. Please, no pictures. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Hashtag on topic podcast on Instagram. All your butt wiping habits. <laughs> Thank you. Imagine if that's the thing we become known for. It's that sort of you know that that's why they suddenly became sort of slightly notorious. That oh yes, no that that, that they discuss bum habits. Uh, it's just, is that, that what you want to be successful for? No. Uh, yes. We want to be successful for Just that. for bum habits. Like, <laughs> damn it! Damn it! 100% <laughs> yes, I want to be successful <laughs> for <laughs> wiping <laughs> arse. Now I've got to accept it. In the <laughs> bum. Well, All right. Okay. when in Rome, fuck arses! Here's, <laughs> here, here's my one problem with standing to wipe. And that's the fact that when you stand, your cheeks close. No, lies. Come on. No, they do. You can squat up. You can bend. Come actually, on, what, what, actually what squatting is the healthiest way to go. To how do you shit? Yeah, but you that, shit all over yeah, your cheeks. That's sitting assuming down. That I'm not going to sit down to take Sorry? a shit. And I blame how much no. space is there? No, but it's, it's just like it's, it's nice to have everything flubby. So so that there's there's no denial of access. Uh, I, I forgot call my about my bum flubby. I forgot about the flubby. <laughs> I must admit, when I was don't forget about Dre. <laughs> you know the flubby. What are you insinuating? Mm. Um, I would like to add that. I always sit down, but if I'm in a hurry, I sometimes stand up. <laughs> well, if I'm really in a hurry, I'll do it while running, but... <laughs> <laughs> and that's where Pebble Dash was created. <laughs> right. I think we got to the end of that one. Yeah, Thank you very absolutely. much, James. <laughs> <laughs>
Hal, Jim. would you care for... Oh, is it Hal? That's Joe. Oh, Johnny. Something from uh, the hot pot? Please. One from the hosts. Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. Johnny's here from a different country. Yay. Oh, this is mine. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> awesome. Go on. Fix. <laughs> um, I'm thoroughly interested in this. Hence why I wrote it. Uh, why are puns considered low humour? They're not. Oh, by they are by people. so many people. Dad jokes, they're called. They're frowned upon. You know that noise you make involuntarily when you hear a pun? You... <sighs> so many people it's, do that. It's 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 not. I, I appreciate a, like a really really good pun, and I've, 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 I've seen I've but seen you come up with some with some corkers. Um, it's it's ones you've heard over and over again, or when it's said in place of anything intelligent or genuinely funny to say. I will never get bored of supplies. No, no, no. Never. Are you saying that puns are not an intelligent thing to say? Because I think it's quite no, good to no, look but... through your faculties, look through your lexicon of words, and be able to match them up. I think it's so. No, you're, you're, not you're not to say that puns can't be used in the wrong way, where they'll just say the pun again and again and again. And it doesn't quite fit. Um, that's... So, yeah, that's not very intelligent. Does, does this count as pronunciation? Does this count as a pun? So every time I hear someone say look at me funny, I always turn around to them and go, look at your what? Yeah, I like that. Is it not, is Every it time I have to say that, it's look at your what? Well, then, that's can I, dad can I, joke can I, category. It really yeah, is yeah, I'm not sure that's can, quite can, a pun. Can I clarify, not necessarily the, it's not necessarily dad humour, but the one that I, I'm sorry for my friends that do say it, but well, no, I'm not. Actually, you should know. <laughs> if anyone ever says... That's what she said, or or or, or said oh. the doc the vicar to the. It's very lazy. Like, don't because like, you can do it the slightly R. Or it's like yeah, but it's so obvious you're going to do that. It's going. It's a reference saying that that was obvious. But it's when <clears> someone <throat> goes, oh, so like, oh, stop it. But and darling, like, yeah, mm. you do say your mum all the time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, it's a, it's as I, I used to have something that I used to say at school, and it was a sort of like almost like a catchphrase thing that I couldn't necessarily easily stop. And I've now discovered that actually the it is a physical it has manifested in a physical urge to say your mum to certain things. Hmm. It's just it, it's not just I laziness. It's, it's just funny. sort of like well, I'm glad you do because I'm going to say it lots in, in our relationship. Then. <laughs> your mum's going to say it lots. Oh, fuck. It, I love you. I love you so hard. <laughs> Oh, I just bruised my leg yeah, just do. doing that. It's, it's, it's something I can't wait to say to my children. <laughs> See, this is the thing. And then having... they'll say, motherfucker. I was having a conversation with... <laughs> yes, they will. I was having a conversation with uh, a group of parents who uh, had brought their kids along. Cause my, my mum runs a, uh, or helps run a cub group. And it was uh, father and... Father... It's not father and son anymore. What is it? Father and cub. Because mm. all organisations to fair, have to have yeah. girls in to now. Be fair. But yeah, that's, that's just weird for, for old scouts to hear because it was always father and son camp because scouts was only guys. You're saying this to the first girl there's, there's that was no in guides the Cub now. Scouts. No, there are guides. But, but there's but also mixed. Well, they go together. They b- Both are mixed. Oh. You, can't, you can't have one for so girls. What's the difference one... between scouts and. One what, wears green uniforms and one, one wears it. yellow. And the other one's called Cubs, the other's called. Brownies or yeah, or, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Which is a shame. It's I just think, different. But never, Embrace but, diversity. But, but, but never mind. Um, so I was talking to a bunch of parents at uh, one of these style camps, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and late at night, just having having a uh, round the fire and whatever. Uh, we were talking about your mum jokes, and this was just when um, the in betweeners had come out, and a bunch of the parents were just like, "But we, I've never your mummed anyone." <laughs> and it was just like they <laughs> they couldn't they couldn't comprehend the idea of you mumming anyone. However, they weird. however they still found in between as funny. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put this back on the topic because I reckon we could actually squeeze an entire topic out of your mum jokes because we we've got we've got a breadth Fair and enough. depth of them. Fair enough. Okay, so we'll go back with puns, wild I puns, low humour. I, I don't believe they are but because they're used in kebab shop signs. <laughs> uh, oh, here's the nail on the head, sir. Well we, done. Okay, so near, the company now. Yeah. Near, nearby here, we live near Patalica, right? Which is a, a florist. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we went to uh, a wedding at this weekend, Duff, Kate, and Mark Duffy just got married. Awesome. Congratulations, but, guys. Congrats, That's not a fun, congrats. by the way. Though, that was not nice. <laughs> but we walked past right before their wedding. There was a there was a florist called uh, Floral and Hardy. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I, my, I love my, it. I love it. No, I, I like I like I like really good ones. I like ones I haven't heard before. Yeah. I like ones that are in uh, like 
intelligent. And I also kind of like the really dark ones. Like there, there's that record shop famously called The Vinyl Solution. Oh, that's oh, lovely. Which that's just, that's just that's fucking. I, I, I heard well, yeah, the, I na- the Nazi laundrette called Ethnic Cleansing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I hope I hope that the, 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 the vinyl solution is very left wing. Just to sort of, yeah. just it's sort of like a hippie yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah, it's a sort of, yeah, they, they, they won't sell any bosom. Well, I mean, Turkey makes wonderful mistakes. The, the first three letters of Istanbul is Ist, so people have started yeah, The taking... Ottoman Empire, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the, they've started taking for business names the first three letters of whatever they're selling and Ist. Okay. And there was a shop selling exclusively wraps, so it was W-R-A-P-I-S-T. Oh, no. <laughs> Speed nine, <laughs> taste eight. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell! You know when you just you you uh, you said with venom in your voice, dad jokes. But I actually find that quite a comfortable. Um, oh, they're lovely. Dad, dad jokes like, are like karaoke. N- oh no, karaoke is fucking wrong. But dad jokes and puns and things like that. I've actually got a book of dad jokes that I bring out. Um, it was a sample at my work, um, and me and my old boss bring it out when when times are really tough. We we bring it out um, in the silence of everyone freaking out and stuff like that, and just open the page and just say one of them, and it breaks the tension so much, and it makes me so happy. And it's a lovely community thing. So if you're saying that. Um, as, as you rightly said, we love puns, but some people do group them in and say, oh, they're dad jokes. I think that's quite a nice, comfortable term, and I want to be part of that team. I, I, I don't dislike dad jokes. It's just it seems that there's more acceptance for the lower form, almost yes. more enthusiasm. Well, no, I do I, agree, I, I, but I, I wanted to fly the flag. I, I, and I'm, I'm also wondering why we have that visceral bodily reaction of, because yeah, yeah. even when we like them, oh, it, it, even when you like it, it's a groan. It's, it's, oh, no. Because it's... it's, it's oh, uh, hang on, hang on. We, we, we've got an answer from the audience. Darren, jump jump on the uh, mic. The, the, the man in the t-shirt. The, the one useless fact I can tell you about this is the reason why it's deemed funny is uh, the same reason why we all laugh at jokes around the Christmas table from crackers. That's what I was about to say. Because the idea is <laughs> they that the they Christmas. are universally bad so that it draws the room together. If uh. you make a good joke, some people may not get it or some people just may not find it as funny as others. Mm. So it divides the room. But if everyone joins in in pinpointing the fact that the joke is bad then everyone is joining in on the fact that we're all in it together. It's a bad joke. So it's so. like the purpose of karaoke. Which is what Andy yeah, said when he enough. said Frack karaoke. Joke. To congregate yeah. in our collective misery. Now, uh, <laughs> Thank un- you, un- Des. unfortunately, Thanks, like, I- I've, got, I've got to separate good puns and dad jokes because for me, dad jokes mm. will, all, will forever entail this one, uh, one in particular dad always used to pull at me when he was cooking. I'd walk into the kitchen and go, oh, dad, what's to eat? And he'd just go, he'd turn around and go, oh, birds go tweet. And leave it at that. And it was like, oh, 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 and then no, it's like, no, what's to eat? Birds go tweet. Dad, what's to eat? Birds go tweet. Fucker. Like, like, so like that, that, that's, that epitomizes a dad joke to me. And I've, I've got to separate that from like good, puns. good, good puns. And it's, it's a good pun. Off. A, a good pun comes when you don't expect it and pun haven't heard it before. It's, it's now become the realm of small commercial businesses. Yeah. So, uh, coffee shops and but they can bars be, they can be glorious. Pubs. They can yeah. be glorious, but only, they only, if you, only when hearing them for, for, we don't mind repeat, but like a lot of puns, the, the best thing about a pun is hearing one for the first time. Indeed. But that, that's why as much as we'd like to fall mm. back on the cliches, it's innovative. You're constantly making new ones. There, there was a guy. Context is really important, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. and impulse. There was a okay, guy. Uh, can I just give you one? Um, my friend told me a story about um, how during a particularly kinky evening, his partner decided to stick pasta up his ass, <laughs> and I immediately went penetration. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. like, that kind of thing. Oh. Oh. Johnny, I know that Tom paid a lot of money for this mic equipment, but drop that mic. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 10 quid mic, mate. You break it, you bought it. <laughs> I'm, I was always told that uh, sarcasm was the lowest form of wit. Mm. Well, I always thought, figured Verda Manning was. <laughs> ah. that, fair enough. You know, I just thought that it's... it's Because it, it's always... I think that generationally speaking, humour and comedy absolutely does not transfer... It, I remember a friend of mine when I was a kid had Roy Chubby Round videos in his house and it always made me uncomfortable. I had never seen them and he it, made me it, horribly it, uncomfortable he to see his face. Become, like, he has since become, and actually rather interestingly, he, he, I now have a sort of sympathy for, for the guy because he's, 
has he's by no means as successful now because it's just not very funny at all or anything like that. But however, he has now become weirdly this cultural arbiter. And he, he, yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's extremely strange. I mean, I, I'm sorry to personalise it, but he was one of the first people, actually, to tweet about my grandfather's death. Wow. And he didn't tweet about it going, I knew a fat... We had once, John Lucinda's dead. You know, it, 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 it sort of... It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's it because I, 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 I yeah, quote right. quoting there. Right. Thank so, you sorry, very much. I, I, I say that because the nature of Roy Chubby Brown's jokes are are precisely within that uh -huh. kind of vernacular, right. and it's obscene. And uh, it's when awful. I say obscene, as in not fun, it's just crass. It's crass. It's but however, horrid. he's now sort of ditched the incredibly awful jokes, um, and has now just become sort of uh, almost like the kind of. Uh, well, I can't say straight to Perez Hilton, but sort of almost like he's he's very, very, he must be glued to Reuters or something. He just so he's just fed into the news machine. What are you going to say about what you associate on everything? Yeah, and who who? No, no, it's not a critique. He's simply report. And there are people who actually pick up now. The thing is, if you say about who and what is successful and stuff like that, I'm very sorry, but the chap's doing very well for replacing himself and being hideously just a step above Operation Utri in popularity. And absolutely and suddenly going, them. Yeah, and then suddenly has actually now become rather popular with a load of young people because he's completely on the news permanently, as in on top of it rather, rather than on the news, and um, is a regular source of a uh, of, of, of very good current affairs. So there you are. So, but nevertheless, he is a very low form of wood. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Al, he is not care, sarcasm. Would you care to give us something from uh, the poll bot? Thank you, Johnny, for that question. Yes. Ta. Oh, we can thank him personally. This is a rare treat. Thank you, Johnny. Oh no! Thank you, Johnny. Is this for thank the question? You Johnny, is it me again? Can I? You know, it's 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 from Big Al. But before I say it, and it is relevant to it actually, the fact that I was just quoting, by the way, as in the the nature of Roy Jobby Brown's jokes, and the fact that I actually said a massively derogatory racial slur, which was in the form of quotation and satire. Yeah. Does that yeah. make that okay? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. That's okay. fine. I, I right. wouldn't bother editing that, to be no, fair. No, but out of interest, is that, is that sort of... It isn't a clap point. I mean, it's just saying... Well, like, no, you know, I mean, that, that, that's, that's kind of... That's Frankie Boyle's entire career. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. He no, doesn't know. He's on fire. He's intelligent and has... Um... <laughs> no, I, I, what, with what you're doing, so I was saying that as... Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, like, no. In, 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 no, not in, from a place of satire. But he wasn't even being inflammatory. He was yeah. just quoting... Yeah. But, right, it's, 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 but yeah, but I mean, I suppose it's, it, I'll tell you what, if someone tuned into this podcast and just skipped ahead and to the point <laughs> at which I'm just going like, yeah, I'm saying yeah, what yeah, I just yeah. did and be like, wow, this isn't what I yeah, want to listen to. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but hang on a second. If, 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 if people who listen to the very podcast specific take, take anything prejudice. we say out of context, all sorts of things could happen. Extreme, Let, <laughs> let's face it. How's not racist against people of Pakistani origin? No, he is actually Spanish racist tourists. against Spanish school <laughs> children <laughs> in Camden. <laughs> Mate, I was going to mention that earlier. And koalas. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you know, every time I, I, went, I came out of Camden and I saw a group and immediately I just thought of how seething. <laughs> <laughs> in all likelihood, I was probably close and doing precisely that. <laughs> I live there. I d oh, anyway, I'll go off on it. So, Big Al says, your most offensive joke. No, oh, I can't do this. come on. That's exactly oh. what I reacted as. Oh, um... We can't. I, 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 Should I just get... How about, how about No, 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 no. The, com the community has we'll asked for it. Oh, well, I'm up for it. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it as right, well. you go first. Go on, mate. Um, I've... I, I, I've been told I've been told a lot, and there, there was there was one I was told very recently that I've, I've clearly just wiped from my memory because I, I, it made me profoundly uncomfortable. The one I can have remember is um, uh, a down a, a, a child with Down syndrome kid goes up to uh, a, an ice cream van and just asks for a ninety nine. And, uh, the, 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 usually you, you do a voice, like when I was told, a voice went along with it. I don't particularly want to, so I'm going to say it straight. Um, but yeah, he, he goes up and says, Oh, can I have a 99, please? And the dude sort of pours him out a 99, um, and says, Oh yeah, that, that'll be a pound, please. Uh, oh, do you want a flake and sprinkles on that? And the kid goes, No, it's all right. I'm just going to drop it anyway. That's, that's one of the oh. most offensive. <laughs> yeah. I, I can think of right now. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know a lot, and that thankfully they're not coming. Oh. They're not coming. Can I, can there I, is can, the, can there is the classic. Gone. Um, because it, it, as we all felt, it makes you feel deeply uncomfortable to think of them. But knowing them and keeping them in your head is not 
a first sign of holding prejudice. I just wanted to make that very clear. Like, no, if, no, I, no. if I remember oh, a no, bad no, no. joke, that doesn't mean that I'm some... But it, um, we've somehow... But are you, not, no. are, you not, are you not perpetuating the issue by entertaining it as a joke rather than a point of, like... Thank you, well, Big I, Al. I don't necessarily consider it them jokes anymore. Well, it, yeah, but the term they are told as that but... joke. So, I mean, by by some sense of at least, I suppose, inference is. So, in the same way that you mentioned uh, a certain uh, yes. proprietor of the X Factor, yeah, but that that that's not. Oh, 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 oh well, that, that in the same way that by mentioning it, you're perpetuating it. Uh, well, yeah, in, in, yeah, in the sense I I, I dis intensely dislike even mentioning that person's name because I I, I don't like to publicise. But however. Uh, there are some who could argue, this is not my opinion, but there are some who would argue that actually one shouldn't really perpetuate an offensive joke that is genuinely offensive to a large amount of people by repeating it. But then I'm also more of the opinion that if you... F mm. My opinion is that these things should be known and then put in their rightful place. It's, yeah, just, it's, the, the, it's the same as denying the BMP a platform to speak. It's the, it's the, 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 the same Michael kind of Jackson thing. jokes that were, were probably. The world is everything that were, is the case. I'm I mean, not prepared to say my most offensive joke on this podcast because I actually don't want even to be recorded saying it. That's how actually how I that, feel. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I, so I, that, I went for it because it, it was asked for, and I, and I think, like, having said it, and I'm, I'm pretty sure if I was given some time, I could remember one of the more offensive ones, but kind of saying it highlights I, and I've got a feeling what Al, Al was going for here was the the assumption that most people would have a bunch of kind of offensive jokes like uh, some some pedo jokes or some dead baby jokes and that 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 was the sort of thing he's going for but I think they're fairly safe now aren't they? the dead baby jokes because it's oh, almost yeah they, they, they that are very but... sentence is staggering <laughs> <laughs> and I find it deeply offensive and it should be removed I'm going to start a petition so but 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 the fact of the matter vein, is like yes I do have one. removed pre-birth it's I, I, okay, I do okay, have one go, in that vein. It's not it. hugely <laughs> offensive, but it's the, I'm terrible at remembering jokes, especially long ones, and so this is the one that's always stuck with me. Go what did it. the deaf, blind, and dumb kid get for Christmas? Cancer. There hey. we go. What did he get for his birthday? A sweet release. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, <laughs> that's I yeah, that my one of my favourite offensive jokes. What did jokes. one poor person say to the other? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that was our best posh voices. Well done, husband. I love you. <laughs> You're so thoroughly lovely. First time you kissed on here. Uh, no, oh. good God. That's lovely to hear. What? By, in the mouth or I, <laughs> around? I found. Um, I found a game. Oh, that was the forty-five minute fellatio. Uh, like. I, I don't want to say Mar Odyssey. Odyssey is the word. <laughs> I, d I don't know. I don't know if it's been published yet. Um, and th there's the there's the Cunny Lingus uh, follow up that is only, only lasts kind of uh, twelve follow minutes. Follow up? How long was I waiting? Sorry, that, that's that, 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 that's more of a trilogy. It's uh, <laughs> what was the third one? Ah, oh, because you well, wear a ring round your neck. Correct. Yes. <laughs> one ring. <laughs> I, I'm completely lost. What's going on now? Don't worry about Sexual it. Sexual innuendos. Anyway, actually, this is probably the most In offensive your joke endo. for yours. Um, I found a, a a game that was linked off the Guardian. Uh, no, not the Guardian, the Telegraph. Who said it? <laughs> oh, what a surprise! Going to say what the fucking. <laughs> okay. Sorry, uh, from the Telegraph, and it's who said it? Neil Farage or Al Murray? Nigel Farage. Oh, Neil oh sorry, Nigel. Oh, I'm so glad I forgot his in, name. Is... I hope, hopefully, <laughs> he will be forgettable. That was in the Metro as well. Eat really? a bag that is, of them that was, that was and big, die. That was big publicised. That was. Does anyone want to play it for yeah, two yeah, questions yeah. at least? Yeah, yeah let's yeah. go for that. So, if any, if anyone knows Neil, uh, oh, fuck Nigel. 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 Nigel Farage is uh, ignorant, and Al Murray <laughs> is intelligent and He's comedic. UKIP representative. Well, Nigel Farage no, is ignorant was. and comedic. F was yeah. it's F U K P uh, as it yeah, but the, what, one is U K P, the other is is yeah, but the the, the yeah, it's it's beautiful. But a lot of respect for Al Murray just to say that Stand great up drummer as well for those great outside the UK. He is, he is. Really, Fantastic. he's he's wow. he's from the stock of Andy Smythe, who's sitting here as one of our hosts. It's the common sense logic, right? So, who said this, Al Murray or Nigel Farage? The Euro crisis is so bad that the world is looking to Germany for leadership and to the French for moral courage. Oh, that's got to be that? Al Murray. Yeah? Uh, I'm going for Al Murray on that I one. I must, I must say this is Al Murray, the pub landlord character. I reckon not... that was Farage. Yeah, that would okay. be Farage. I think I'm with you on that. More, more people are saying Farage, so I will vote for Farage. And what do we say? Mm. Ah, the correct answer was Al Murray because oh, okay. he was playing so much tongue in cheek. Yeah, 
to me it sounded like a joke, but I'm guessing everything that Nigel Farage is going to say is going to sound like a joke as well. So let's go on. Come so, on, Nate. Next one. So next one. One more. We wouldn't want to be like the Swiss, would we? That would be awful. We'd be rich. Al Murray, Al Murray or the Murray. Or that sounds Nigel like Farage. Al Murray to that me sounds, as well. That sounds like an Al Murray. Okay. Please don't be Nigel Farage. It is oh. Nigel Farage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You see, okay. the, we're, we're going to lose this game because it, he he is comedic and he's not trying to be. Yeah, let's keep going. Fuck it, I'm enjoying this. No, 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 no. We can't. This is a podcast. This is absolutely. This is absolutely good radio. If we made it, maybe. Anyway, so. So, Topic. one from the community. Uh, we've just had one we just from the community, one from haven't community. we? Grab the host pot. Grab the hot pot, hun. Oh, Actually, sorry. no, fuck it. Do one from community. Oh, we've got so we've got many. so fucking many. Thank you, guys. In fact, like, this might be the time to point out. This is very warming. Yeah, no, right. We've, Listeners... There's- We've got so many. We've had so many from you recently that we've Thank actually you. got more in the poll pot than we did before the community episode. So that's wonderful. We're going to do another community episode next episode, Good just idea. to thin out thin it out a little we're, bit. We're going to move it to every five episodes of community episode because you guys have been so fucking amazing. Guys, thank honestly, you thank so you. much. That's, that's, that's actually awesome. big, big shout it's, out it's to staggering. Ricard, Big Al. Dave Vincent, Ozzy Dan, Ozzy Dan, yeah. Dan. Uh, we've, yeah, we've had some from James, James Captain, Captain, Sickbeard. Sickbeard. Captain Sickbeard. Captain Sickbeard has put in a few this week. Jesus Christ, Sophie. you guys have been awesome. Yeah, Sophie as well. Jake. Daz as well, thank you very much, dude, who's in the room. Who's deceiving them from Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of those. Anyway, this one is from Big Al. And I quite like this thank one. Thank you, Big Al. Love you, babe. Algebra. We learnt it at school. <laughs> is it a pointless topic to learn? How much do you use it? Now, I like this one because algebra, I'm, I'm shit at maths. I failed maths. And it's the only, um, uh, what would you say? Not the, not the common subjects, but the subjects you have to take. Core. The core. That's the one. Core. Core subjects. Core. Um, I completely failed. Algebra was the only thing that I could do. Really? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm quite good at algebra. Algebra being equations and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So find X, basically. Yeah. Um, and I had a math teacher that used to talk to X. He used to walk in with his little briefcase and then was it do Mr. the equation. Oh, it was Mr. Wankowski. I had him too. Yeah. He let out the rabbits at the end of was the this, class. Was this case of find X, it's in your fucking briefcase, you nonce? Was that, <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> he wrote and, it up on the board and, and then he I'm sorry, to be like, you, so, Did X, you just say Mr. Wankowski? Well, no, no, no he's called Mr. Wankowski. Like, okay. However, it is spelled Mr. Amazing. Wankowski, yes. Yeah. Okay, and that must have been pleasant in a secondary school. I, I did really, really like him. Nice. Um, it wasn't it wasn't nice for the rest of the class, but I really did like him. I'm glad you had him as well. Um, he he did was a song. actually very sweet. He was very, very sweet, even if he was completely tragic. Wasn't and it Vankovsky as well? Vankovsky, yeah. Him, I yeah. just um, <laughs> got to say Vankovsky. He, <laughs> as, as an algebra lesson, he had a song that he put together on the projector, and he used to do his little dance, and he used to sing the song along, and it was Kissy Kissy Plus. Did you learn the kissy no, kissy plus? No, I did not. Kissy, <laughs> Do you care to rendition a version for us? The kissy kissy plus is algebra. Okay. And I can't remember all the lyrics, but it's, yeah, it's a plus, it's a kissy kissy plus. Um, and basically, kissy kissy plus is when um, you've got, uh, when, when you add negatives and positives together. Yeah. So if you've got two negatives together, it's a positive. Yeah. A kissy kissy plus. So if you draw a face of the kissy kissy plus, it's two negatives. So it's someone closing their eyes and the plus is the kiss. Hmm. Oh, okay. So and it's the only way negatives. I've been able to remember it. And to be fair, even though people took the utter piss out of him because he used to let the rabbits out of the room after we finished the lessons, even though there were no rabbits. <laughs> Okay. Right. Ex- sorry, to explain. Say, okay, there were no rabbits. He just said, let's open the window so we can let the rabbits out the room. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but this guy sounds absolutely astonishing. He was so he sweet. Fantastic. And he was so that sweet. shit crazy at the same time. He was absolutely adorable. So, so often and in he, life that those in, coincide. I'm, I don't know <laughs> God, where yeah. he turned off after working in a, in a secondary school with people taking the crap out of him for being called Mr. Vankovsky and being... Um, quite creative. What a bold yeah, okay. yeah. He was very. It was very bold. Kids will be mean. Well. I had a teacher called Juham for many, many years. <laughs> wow. His name. Was, his name was actually was Juham. But yeah. I remember we had we had a we had a tech teacher called Michael Rack, and he wouldn't let people call him Mike. <laughs> Mike Rack. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, I was on on the subject of maths. I was taught maths by a uh, Mr. Gaylor. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> a big shout out to my math teacher, Mr. Raw. He was from the Caribbean. He was, Mr. Raw, you listen to me. 
<laughs> oh, we, well, we, 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 we had a, a chap that was from Trinidad, and his particular catchphrase, you cannot! And it, 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 <laughs> oh, wonderful. you cannot! And it, was, it, was just, it was the appeal to Handel. But, 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 but Mr. Gaylor, obviously, understandably, I mean, it takes a lot of boldness to maintain it's the amazing. kind of joke that you, if you were bullied at school, you will get worse as a teacher. Oh, gosh, yeah. When 100 you, times you, fold, you, yeah. Absolutely. And admiration to all the teachers for, for, for doing so. But I mean, every I, I once went to a school where I discovered I had been to one school and another guy that I arrived at another school had been to another completely separate school. And we both had uh, created what was called the Pinky Assassination Squad. Where there was this one English teacher who had obviously travelled around, God knows why, and I don't think it was anything new tree or anything, whatever, but it was just that he'd gone around <laughs> different schools <laughs> and had had this little toy that he would put on the whiteboard, and we all tried to kill it. <laughs> and he'd gone through, therefore, three schools by the time we discovered that this was the case, and no one had managed to kill it. But I, it, it, was, it was just, I mean, t t teachers, what the hell? I mean, how do they manage to go through? Yeah, all I've, of, I've never especially be a in teacher. secondary school no. when people are getting all wise arse. Mm, 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 yeah, mm, I'm not sure. Mm. So, um, so anyway, really, algebra really pointless. pointless. Yeah, yeah. No, re I don't re remind so. me of the question. I, algebra, algebra, you, pointless algebra question. is it pointless or is it good? Speak the engineer <laughs> in the room, Andy. That's true. Uh, algebra's just about finding sort of like uh, repetitive processes that always come up with the same answer. Yes. Is yeah, it more input, philosophical than it is actual? You know, you just you, you you build the framework. You you want an answer. You get the two bits of information. You put it in. You compute it. It chugs out the the answer you want. Yeah, that's what algebra sort of is for 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 yeah, any process. It's, it's it's logic thinking. People use it every day. Just it's not written down. There's a reason it exists because it's a very logical system of working out a problem. Because you yeah. manage to basically. Am I right in saying that these symbolise um, <clears throat> two issues and then work them out that way? I mean, I, I, I was one of these people that got intensely angry about the thing. Of, oh, I've never used long division. And then actually, to be honest with you, I mean, there's a lot of Facebook memes about it now. Like, you know, I would have done better if I'd been taught at school how to fill out a tax return form. With it. And it's like, well, yes, but you did, many people got taught cooking. So, sorry, no. Could I but with the whole ad algebra thing, sorry, Johnny. Mm -hmm. um, with the whole ad I, I, only just very recently in getting into the vaping industry. That in vaping you have to understand voltage drop and electronics, and which is my my absolute antithesis. It's sort of I, I, it's all oh, god. To, it's, it's it's you have to understand some equations at some point. You really do. I yeah. mean, there's there's. I mean, even if it's on a simple mathematical thing of sort of working out like you know if it tax. To be honest with you, as a way mm. of doing it, but I had to do Ohm's law recently. Mm. Which I know I was taught briefly at some point in physics at, were, at, yeah. at school, but and suddenly I now went. Bugger it! It is. Actually, it's not just that oh, I begrudgingly have to do it for my job. This is my interest, and yeah. uh, and suddenly now it's it, it's absolutely you know practical. Um, and I think that as a general point, really, that the British schooling system and, and you know curriculum doesn't have a lot to answer for. It's actually pretty bloody good because we've been given some very useful stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, first, I'd like to add because we're talking about a particular area that maybe some people don't see any point in. Um, I just wanted to quote uh, A.E. Hausman, who said that all knowledge is precious whether or not it serves the slightest human use. And I like that quote a lot in terms yeah. of somebody with mm -hmm. eyes open observing the world. Um, second, you made a very interesting point, Hal, um, about uh, how some people are saying, why don't I get taught these more practical things at school? There's a lot of people coming out of that at the moment and yeah, saying right. that the school didn't teach me anything, the, the we don't need no education kind Common of sense stick. Taught me right no, now. it's not the no education, it's it's... Can you, you know imagine? the people, you know the working class kids that sang on that song did not get paid. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> they, 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 they didn't. But then also my tutor who. We how, don't how, get how, remuneration. Very good. <laughs> but there's, a, there, there's the glory of the pun. <laughs> but, yeah. But, but the, the absolute vanity of, uh, I think maybe some people have figured that, that what's the title of your autobiography and some people have it or whatever but if I was ever so vain and terribly self-important enough already am that I would make a autobiography I'd just I would always name it Good Afternoon Mr Vince because he it was something I regularly said to my tutor who was possibly one of the most influential teachers I've ever had and he had particularly said in growing up in the age that he did within like Pink Floyd, the era of the time that was released, you know, that, that particular single was released, you know, another brick in the wall, that he said, oh, people are wandering out of school go, we don't need no edge. And he was just like, 
fuck off you do. I think this has been said on the podcast before. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. My, my apologies. It's, it's, not, no, no, it's no, a very interesting all, point. It's a good in, point. Invariably, the only people that say it are the ones that have had the privilege of going through education and then decided afterwards that it wasn't worthwhile. Well, to be Whilst fair, they is it have Nick? The they had the ammo behind they were, them. They were given the ability to say it, yes. to voice it. Yes. I mean, it, but is it sorry? Oh, God, well, well said. said. Very, 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 very well, well said. said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I was just arguing with someone about this a couple of days ago, so it's fresh in my mind. But so was it? It's just awful of me, but the. Nick, the 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 the, the, the ah, the, sorry, the Pink Floyd Nick Mason. Yeah, thank you, Nick Mason. Jump. Yeah, who had? I will grant him his impetus behind writing a lot of the war because he it would oh, Roger Waters, you mean? That he uh, sorry, my uh, complete apologies, <laughs> R- 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 Roger Waters. Uh, sorry, I just not a big Bit fan of, a of wall uh, there, uh, right? uh, yeah. Thank you, well done. <laughs> I'm not a massive fan of Pink Floyd, I will admit, but it's it's more that he evidently had a terrible time at school and was bullied senselessly and if you go back from the interviews and you know the the uh even just the subject matter of listening to the war he obviously had a really tough time um which is fine but i think what that was misconstrued as being the education itself was wrong rather than the structure of education at the time well if that's the point they were making that's an incredibly important point I, no, I don't think anybody got that. <laughs> what a pity. Uh, Nor no, did the film yeah. no, well, go anywhere. Right, and it, I, I was shown at a very early age, but I never got the message of that being, <clears> yeah, <throat> we don't need it. Uh, well, I think you kind of do. Whiskey's finished. Oh, oh, no. Now, to get really, back to the topic. Really good um, whiskey. Uh, <laughs> I've, I, I've, had to use, uh, I've had to use algebra in a couple of odd occasions where I've, I've had to do like make repeat things on different scales that aren't easily scalable and there's a weird var- variable involved and I found the easiest way to do it was to kind of algebraize it like th- there is and it really algebraize. surprises <laughs> uh, algebraize it um, <laughs> like <laughs> there was um, yeah like I, I find I find it comes up like weirdly I mean especially in what I do algebraate would that be like taunting people with mathematical symbols <laughs> baby tonight I'm hitting algebraate. people with logic A plus B equals what motherfucker <laughs> sweetie I'm gonna find your X the value of Mm. I, your I, D, maybe. I think there might actually be a um, what's his name Nicholas. I think there's a Nicholas Cage quote. Go on, where he screams some algebra. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, he does. He does. He does. Uh, alphabet, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think he yells. He yells some some sort of vaguely basic algebra in um, uh, in that, that film yelling? where he stole no. the cars that night. Gone in sixty seconds. Well, and of course, there's this wonderful scene in Battle Royale where uh, one of the students slash contestants, who's obviously cracked under the combined pressure of schoolwork and having Being to compete, the shit out yeah, of compete other. against all his peers, he um, he approaches one of the main characters with a gun, shouting out al- algebraic parallel <laughs> equations. <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's fucking amazing. Uh, I would love to see Nicolas Cage play Shakespeare. In fact, I would love to see him do basically Romeo at this age. It would be just be, wouldn't it be oh fascinating? Oh my god, that's it, yeah. horrible. But sir, uh, what life are you doing? Oh my god, could he play? Who would be Juliet? No, 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 no. It, no, 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 no. Always no. Claire Dane. <laughs> no, yeah. no uh, if he's playing Romeo, Juliet so is Keanu. Reeves. No, Keanu Reeves. Oh, yes! So, oh. I love Keanu Reeves seemingly as a person. He seems like a nice guy, but his acting. Whew, and Nicolas Cage, fuck that shit. So, him as Romeo and Keanu Reeves as. Juliet? Holy crap. St- Keanu Reeves in drag doing that. Holy crap. Right. That'd be amazing. Cool. So, musical interlude is our next topic. Ooh. So, I believe, since it's a Turkish special, we should have the Turk in the room do one. Go on, Johnny, get your Despite the fact guitar. he's from, get your like, Turk just out. Get, get your twang out. Yeah, would you, you care to, would you care to make something up right on the spot for us? That'd what? be lovely. Cheers, go. Goodbye. Thank you. Make up a song. Make yeah. up a song. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, no, Johnny's going to play for us because we've Hang liberated on. this Go beforehand. We're going to let him smoke first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we've deliberated this beforehand, so Johnny's going to play a song from himself, Johnny Day, playing... Um, This is a song called Tripolar. Thank you. 
be said like the, the toast solo took me by complete surprise purely because you didn't have a fucking toaster no, how did know. you make that happen uh, for me it was the wobble board Mate, oh my god. Mate, god hang on hang on so, guys yeah. can we just quit with the racism here the, the brass section was really good the lip syncing was no, off. No, no. The, the brass section can fuck off. The brass section can fuck off because they're Spanish and school children in, in Camden. And it's my understanding they weren't even invited. Uh, how they happen to how they <laughs> oh, to play that's in right. Oh, 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 that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they were invited. Live all again. I, I actually composed their part entirely on a ruler, so it's fine. <laughs> 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 Ferdinand de Vargo. <laughs> Cool. So um, one one from me from the pole pots, I believe, is the way to be going. Okay. Right. If you feel that way, you oh, find. I don't understand how Johnny no. can make that music come out of yeah, his fingers. Pole pot. <laughs> I know. Um, right behind oh, the scenes. Where's the beanie gone? It's behind the scenes. We actually oh, did. Johnny. Are you not just doing the reactions? Him do it. Doing reactions? We've done the reactions. That's we, we've it. done the reactions. Was, we, 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 yeah, we were quite kind. Cheering yeah. was the reaction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't understand how Johnny can make that music come out of his fingers. Johnny, thank you so much for sharing. Imagine what you can do with the whole hand, baby. <laughs> Yeah, Fucking check that out, listeners. Your first live performance. I reckon there we go. Swear, swear. We're right. going places. And oh, by the way, I don't know, I don't know, we're going there on the back of Johnny, and he's gonna like it. I like the way you say down on your bit, you bitch. And by I like the, way, the way, you say live performance as if podcast is a live media. <laughs> <laughs> and and by the way, it was rec- recorded live at the Sawmill Studios. You'll be able to see That's a it. video yeah. version. Read of the small print carefully. That sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> There is a filmed version of it. I like how you it. film everything. Yeah, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll put up a film version the on the YouTube Both. channel. Okay. Film everything. So, oh. come on then. Next topic, motherfucker. Fucking hell, I couldn't be happy. This has come out now. <laughs> um, this is a topic that's come out a couple of times before. Is this from the community or us? This is from the community. This is from Mark B. This has come out a couple, a couple of times before, but it's is always it come from, up sorry? as the last question. We're not supposed it, to fucking admit from? that. No, no, no. I, I want to admit who's this. Is it from? This is from Mark B. And I've, I've always wanted to get back to this one, but um, the first it time it came, came up, we were trying to do a, a speed round. It was the first episode. Uh, we were trying to do a speed round uh, for the very last thing, and this is the one that came up. And it was just like, oh, no, this is kind of too big to go into right now. And then it came up right at the end of, I think, the next the or the third. Yeah, but by that point, we're all too hammered. To, to really deal with it. but um, And so now it's come up at the end of the 14th episode. So... Let's fucking do it. Okay. Mark B that. asks, I feel the need to hear you discuss the difference between logic and law. For example, you have two scenarios. I think it is lawful but illogical, um, or the other is uh, logical but illegal, but both come with repercussions. Which would you choose? So let, let, let's kind of... Lo- logic versus law. Uh, Hal's got his hand up. Oh, I'm really sorry. and I don't want to... I'm not saying I'm trumping everyone here. It's only that I... I studied law, um, and one has to understand, unfortunately, that the, whilst I completely understand the, uh, you know, annoyance about distinction between logic and law, I'm afraid it's down to precedent and what it does in a society, which is basically fundaments of law, which is that, yeah. you know... Uh, uh, it, well, which well, which comes from a logical standpoint of... Yes. But law can be we'll, actually... We'll make it as it comes. Logical. We haven't got really logical. Logical. But, but, however... The, Men cannot rape. I'm sorry, women cannot rape men. In quite a lot of places. Most places. Well, I, in, in fact, by, by, by the actual written law in this country, unless it's been amended recently, a, a man cannot rape a man because uh, rape is... Uh, is, is that's not still the case is. recently. No. That, that, that's, that's, uh, that's been changed because it, it, it was for the longest time. Rape, rape was only um, forced vaginal intercourse. I'm afraid it's it, 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 well. Yeah, that, there's, there's no afraid about it. If it's been changed that a man can now rape a man, that's no, no. It's, or, it's, it's, it's the, sorry, uh, sorry, dude. It's, it, it's that there were precedents before then as to the illegality of uh, what it was. Is basically homosexuality was illegal for a huge amount of time. Then sodomy became illegal mm. after homosexuality. So actually, funnily enough, the it was regarded more as a criminal act than a sexual act, if that makes sense, like a, an act of violence or aggression. Um, yeah. So it, uh, sodomy was regarded more, well, less as a sort of, if this makes sense, a sexual offence. 
like a sexual assault more to a criminal assault Does yeah that, but I, I think I, th- I think this, this worked kind of wonderfully into the topic because like with, with those laws you were looking at um, law without logic you were, well, you're, it was based on it was based on Christian reasoning it was based on, it, on the it, Christian it, law it, system it, sorry which it, is it completely it without that's it's completely without logic. Not well. No, it's not. No, they they they, no. they have. But no. they, yeah, that that those kind of points, like those parts of it, we have completely without. Logic. We have the first of essentially the covenants between man and God, which is basically the entirety of the Bible, which is the covenant. However, the testament. Uh, so, oh, what am I about the the sorry the uh, the. Oh my! Well, the, 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 the Moses going uh, the, the, the the Levi the books commandments, or the yeah the, sorry the the, the the commandments which are far greater than ten. Um, of which are of, of great plentitude is the, uh, as it were, first occurrence of it being as it, you know, carved in stone, which is obviously the, uh, the, the religious point. But um, since then, man has been granted the chance to obviously not necessarily uh, diminish the importance of any of the commandments, but more uh, like a sort of, well, as almost like a, one would conjugate a verb of just saying, right, this applies to this, it applies to that, and it's all based on precedent. So uh, to say that there's a logic and law divide is I understand entirely if it seems like something is senseless to a body of people, but you have to understand that that a law would not be in existence without precedent. And when the precedent no longer seems to apply on a cultural basis or societal basis, then yes, of course, it appears illogical. It was law at one point. Like the whole business of, you know, it's legal at one point in the day for English people to shoot with an arrow a Welsh person from a certain class of ramparts. The reason why is based on legal precedent. So if there's, be it civil, criminal, you know, or a- any other matter, is that it will not have it's existed. Yeah, but it's 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 to the person who made it at the time. That's why I'm saying by precedent. Yeah, but, but si- simply saying like it, this is all based in precedent is kind of, Walking around the issue of logic versus law. No, because like, I mean, for for instance, let me let me put forward. The um, law should be changed sort of, because of logic. Like, so the one that instantly springs to mind for me what is, is actually saying is completely is, accurate. But which is, 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 I'm so yes. sorry, Taz. It's, it's, it's just that what Andy said is 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 I believe to be the point, which is that uh, apparently all laws should, uh, uh, by your logic, and I, I'm not decrying that you, you're absolutely right. But that would mean that in some weird abstract concept, all laws and all legislation, which is initially based on precedent in any case, should somehow naturally, organically just alter and legislate themselves by process of societal logic, you know, in, in the sense of like, oh, well, none of us have a bow and arrow anymore or, or anything like that. Therefore, we, 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 but have, we keep uncovering these, these, ultimately odd bylaws in 16 but what we keep running up against how is is laws that are now like provably completely logical that are not being removed because they're they are now setting off the one that they keeps are being the removed. one that keeps coming to mind for me right. the one the one that keeps jumping up is is global drug policy right it now exists in a completely illogical um I mean, pl- I mean, place I mean, other than <laughs> like but what was the people like parties, the people that like, they, they 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 run policies on drug policies. Like we will fight the war on drugs because this is what the people the head, want to the hear. The head scientist but of the government was fired g- because g- he said that MDMA was not harmful. Yeah, that, that's that, not yeah, the sole that, reason he was fired. No, no that's not but, true. But, n- yes, that's, he, he didn't that's say not that. the sole reason he, he was fired. It was the negligence. And it was it was right down. You come down to negligence in the way that okay, there was there was an applicable system at that. Oh, hang on, we got semantics here. No, sorry, I'm really curious about this. No, because he wasn't just fired for right. It is misappropriated appropriated by um, a lobby that I don't disagree with, which is in the sense of legalization of certain narcotics within, you one can argue, I mean, God, this is a massive subject. Do we really want to get into this? It's, yeah, it's not the topic, but yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 I understand I, where you're I, coming I'm from. I'm not going to pass this up for a third time, so let, let, let's go with it. Yeah. Now, I'm, no, I'm going to take not, a no, not, no, sorry, the but entire just, topic, that particular facet uh, of it. Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. so let, let, let me bring it back to a, a purely logic versus law uh, mm-hmm. Sort of scenario with, within this kind of Laurie's realm. Logical, that's the. <laughs> but it's fucking not because if it you and if it is, Taz, mate, I'm if, sorry, it if is. If you analyse no, global no, drug no. policy, no, just no. give me a chance to talk. I'm, so if if you analyse global drug policy and have mm-hmm. have a look at it, which is basically like absolute zero tolerance, no, 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 war on drugs, but actually look at it logically. And so, for instance, you got a wonderful example in Portugal where they decriminalise and everything is dropped. Now that's not, not my main. That's not well. my main yeah. point. My main point is 
people like to get fucked up. Always have. That's why um, alcohol is is so prevalent. It's because people need, like, people want a drug. People want other drugs as well. Now, the war against drugs costs has cost trillions, absolute trillions, and the fucking carnage it's caused in South America and Afghanistan has caused so much more damage than the drugs, like, just, uh, like, letting people have their high may would I, have done may I otherwise. You, and I'm sorry to cut you off, Tess, but may I predate you the war against, like, vice and prostitution far predates that. And Are you saying that yeah, yeah, okay, but, invalid? No, but, by no means, but what, 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 what I would compare it with and just to, to uh, uh, and believe me, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm honestly not. I'm, I'm, I'm as much on your side about this. There is a, there is a plentitude of law surrounding narcotics and that kind of use that is seemingly illogical by a modern co context and perspective. So okay? you, but hang on, hang on, carry on. on. I'm carry sorry, on. but, but what we, what we have faced, however, predating narcotics, as in what we con con like uh, contemporaneously understand as narcotics. What predates that massively is vice and prostitution is in, in, in specific, as in, like, to be specific about this, prostitution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which has, for thousands of years, been illegal. It's the world's oldest industry. Right, thank you. Which uh, answers a great amount of society's ills. It's a cultural, uh, you know, it's, it's a sort of cure for a miasma, which, by the way, was once referred to in the 50s as the social miasma by which it was a collective term for sex and drugs, notwithstanding rock and roll. This existed in the 1950s, okay? It was basically, it was the precursor to McCarthyism. However, what I'm trying to get at, and, and forgive me, I'm not trying to go against sort of, you know, the things that seems ultimately logical. Unfortunately, how between my argument and yours, yeah. what, what, what we've done is we've both taken down the original standpoint, which the, which is that law is logical. It's not. We've, we've it's, given... No, no, we've, wasn't, wasn't, we've no I was saying law is logical. Could I interject? No, that, that's what you were saying. And Johnny, we've, we've well, just pointed well. out situations in which it's not. Johnny, sorry, mate. Um, I, I speak this point knowing that it sounds absurd, but um, I think we feel it. Um, if we take the supposition that law is logical, which I, I think I agree it is, it, when, when, when something comes into law, there is a logical, as you say, precedent that's, there. That's my point. It's reaction. But we all know this feeling, I believe, and I think most people do, that not just um, temporarily, logical things come to feel illogical. We have logical things that actually embody well, illogic. It seems... Yeah. It, it seems senseless and therefore we alter the thing is how else will law learn were it not for, for okay you, what, what one has to understand is that to say that something that which that which we are governed by in some sense should be in some way unanimously and progressively utterly uh, ultimately infallible which is entirely impossible what you're imbuing on is some weird sort of godlike power of saying like all law should progress as per society and culture. But then that's, are, that, that is the ultimate totally, logical fallacy. Right, right, but however, yeah, but the things, but law itself can only ever be reactionary by law of precedent. Because if we start inventing laws on a progressive principle, saying, well, you know, we do, by the way, legislation now is progressive on the sense of what something could happen, as in it projects forwards. However, we cannot substantiate for something that doesn't yet exist. So so what's happening now is we're talking at cross ends because I, I'm, I'm trying to answer the question about uh, logic versus My law in okay. law. You're, you're Sorry. talking about the process of law. Sorry, I'm yes, talking about right. laws yeah. as an entity. Yeah, absolutely. And Sorry. in answer oh. to the question, I would rather have uh, logic over legality. Basically, the, the difference being... Uh, if we take a recent social change, has been basically the world acceptance of marriage equality. Uh, with Which is slowly growing, yeah. The, the Western world suddenly realising that this is a civil issue. Which I don't oppose, by the way. Of course not. No, no. No one around this table will say that marriage equality so meant for yeah, yeah. homosexuals, heterosexuals, transsexuals, whatever, does not matter. I got, in, I got into a very because, interesting discussion about the transsexual Because, thing. as Hal quite rightly says... Society has caught up progression. With logic yeah, but, but the, in but the, the can, social I, can I just ask the logic of the people However, who, who believe that's fine? Because it's not down. Okay, sorry. There's a there's a centre of basically cultural empathy exists within a certain sense. Okay, now the thing is, law is governed by a number of factors, but the most significant of which is precedent. If something doesn't happen... Again, 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 again,
that we don't want to go down that road. <laughs> okay, no, 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 that's that, 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 that's that, right. But the whole thing of like accusing that, or, or you are quite or, or, correct, definitely. However, that is not the question. Right. Not, not law. Yeah, so I mean, this almost comes back to algebra in a sense because, like, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna take something on logic, what you want to do is you want to take an issue, you want to like have a look at all the variables, calculate it, and see like we can measure, actually... measure harm harm versus benefit and kind of uh, p- like the policeable nature of it versus I'm the unpolicable nature. We could, I agree. We could actually just and, put a very simple equation on this and just say that. Um, Law is logic plus time. Like that's no, 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 no. Well, yeah, that, again, it's, again, it's that's the process it's, it's, rather it's, it's, than it's your opinion on it. Like mm. I, I respect law as in like I'm glad that there are laws out there, but logic dictates that I, you know, well, like I, if if, well, I'm, actually, if, if I'm driving and that. the idea is me dropping something off, the law is is double your line can't do it, but I'll do it anyway. But because that's, it makes sense. But that's a situational process. Yeah, but, okay. that, no, I'm but sorry, that, is, but... that is actually my point. Logic versus law. No, it, I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but situation. Dave, as in like a collective friend of ours, Dave, you know, came down to the vape shop today and one of the subjects we talked about over a coffee and getting him this great device, whatever, was uh, the existence of traffic wardens. And he was absolutely... And he, I believe he said it this, this last weekend when we were here, is that he tried to imagine a world, as in a London, without the traffic wardens that, that exist. What we have to realise is, whilst we utterly hate them because they dole out extortionate fines, is that their actual process is vital. Because if you have people saying, Oh, mate, no, give me that. I was only just dropping off something on a double, double yellow line, which is an access point for emergency vehicles. If at that point, an entire avenue, road, street, whatever, has been completely lined with people saying, I was just this, that, yeah. I was dropping off to here, I was visiting my sister who is ill, I am visiting my newly born thing. Now, the thing yeah, is, so on subjective left, left on a red light. So, so Andy, what you're doing there was measuring law versus convenience. I, I, su- I suppose. <laughs> I think. I think. I think. I think that. Uh, sorry. I, I. I think that. Uh, the. The. Obviously, like we've, we've obviously been through this already. Like there, there are laws that are in place that seem illogical, and in those in those sentences, when, you know, I can see no logic in the law, I would prefer logic. Yes. There are lots of laws, however, that coincide with logic. Well, hey, wouldn't everyone that's been convicted or accused of something... Which rather, is where I agree rather... with Johnny when he says that logic... What was the equation? It's law plus time. I don't think that's yeah, actually... Yeah, yeah. I don't lo- think that's lo- temporary. Lo- law plus time. Process. Logic that's slash definition progression. Of law. But look, but logic and... Time and, is the progression, I would say. Yeah. And law both progress. Well, just there I agree. Yeah, I think we're all there, to be fair. Oh, so fucking glad to have tackled that uh, subject, even just a little bit. I mean, that, I mean, that that's a huge one. But let, I, let's... I'm, I'm sad we... Am completely admitted being at wrong and putting a topic back in the pot. Sorry, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all I'm about le- full disclosure sorry. on this one. It's entirely my bad, and I'm sorry. I, I, it's it's, not, you it's not your bad at all. Bad. It's not your bad at all. It's not your bad. The first, what, time, what? the first time we had no time was we were trying to keep it to an hour. The second time we were smashed and was not the time to talk about it. So it and was then it's absolutely not come up for fine. 12 more episodes. So. But thank you, Mark B. If you're still listening, I have been waiting to talk about that. And we're and that so was a bloody sorry good topic. That we was didn't do it on the first Yeah, episode. absolutely. That was brilliant. Uh, but let's, Intense as hell. Let, let's see. Let's see. Let, let's chance our arm and see if we can get something light. One more light thing off the pot topic. Andy, please thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Plays, films, reworked to potentially controversial proportions... <laughs> i.e. Othello with uh, a pos- opposedly racial cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when, when you say opposedly racial, no, as, it, as in every, the word everyone's... The oppositely, <laughs> and I wrote it. Wow. Okay, right. so it, it's so in, in which everyone's black apart from the person who plays David, the Iago? David, David, the, David no, Bowie Othello. did it, right? Othello. Othello, sorry, yeah. David Bowie did it, didn't he? No. Yeah, no who he did it? No. Uh, Patrick Stewart, it did. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what yeah. a weird choice. Patrick Stewart. No, as in, like, why did I choose that way? So, just to uh, to inform if it would help my listeners. My captain, my fucking captain. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, sorry, but uh, why is it, for reason? you know, there are, what, since him, two captains? So, you have Janeway, 
Um, Jane Way. And yeah. sorry, J- my, my bad. And then Jane away. I thought it was Jane Way. <laughs> no, no, no. It, but, uh, surname is Jane Way. Jane Way. Thank you. Then is it DS Nine that had uh, Cisco? Mm. Right. So that's two captains beyond Stewart. Uh, there's more. Well. Mm. Two captains well, of the Enterprise. Like look, n- neither of those are captains Stuart, of the Enterprise. Like, oh, I thought no. that was um... uh, Cisco. Cisco was the captain of Deep Space Nine, which was and the, the space and station. The it, was the, it was the it was the most furthest deep space space station okay. from Earth. Whereas Janeway was the captain. Isn't of it Voyager, odd that as in which capturing was the ship that had gone the furthest ever? Is, it was like, yeah. Isn't it odd that the, 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 the capturing sort of like society sort of you know or, or just admi- is it admiration I don't know but like Picard's sort of what's this got to do with ad- the topic admiration is, is is just for some reason it's he just was he's the best the, captain he is, is that what it was is it, the, the, why why Kirk, uh, for Kirk what was incredible he was a character because he was a he... explorer an adventurer. Whereas Picard it's led men. It's because Sorry, listeners, I was away getting a beer. I just have to point out, Cisco was a fucking commander. Oh, he was the oh, Mac God. fucking he daddy. Was. Well. He was the, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, is yeah. that good? Or, he was a commander. He wasn't yeah, a captain. He wasn't a captain. He wasn't he was a captain. Command, he was a commander no, of a commander. space station. But we pointed out he wasn't a captain of the... But, but oh, I didn't know. know. I Picard bloody didn't know. In, Picard turned into a commander, didn't he, in the later films? No. Uh, commanders... Uh, well, on a on space... So no, hang on. Okay, does that mean he was a governor? Let, let's let's get back to let's get back to the question. I think that watching Star Wars, where all the star, uh, stormtroopers were black, would be, <laughs> would be uh, and then Darth Vader would be white. Well, no, that he would, wouldn't. That, that would be no, no. The, the actual would be. But we're, talking, it, we're talking the opposite. Well, then, who technically acted Darth Vader through the majority? Oh, of dear, we keep... James Earl Jones. Well, well. Uh, Okay, yeah, so, it, so, it, so it, Bill Bates, let's, to be believed, the body was a Welsh guy. Let, let, I, I, I know, I, I, a white Welsh guy. I stand by the, the point of seeing a, a white... You're a with the Rebel Alliance. Star, he was Zarveda, a Welsh, he was called a traitor. Oh, I thought he was Welsh. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, the force is strong, listen. No, no. <laughs> let's talk Andy. about Star Wars uh, some more and not the topic. Andy, I, I, the I, I, I still stand by the idea of a, of a completely white Darth Vader would be peculiar. And I think I would, I would, I would feel the same in... You know, any any other film. I, I think you'll find he was white until he was put in the suit. Can we repeat the question at all? <sighs> oh, sorry, was that a joke? Oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I'm trying to keep it light. Oh, mind. oh. But, but basically, oh. Yeah, the, the question is, um, the, take take a particular slice. The Stormtroopers slice. Were all, weren't all white, were they? No, no, their, their actual opposites would be Australians. Uh, however, <laughs> um, to, yeah, so the question was essentially, take, you know, any given slice of entertainment and reverse the roles uh, on... Like on a racial basis. So, for instance, the the example. No, no, no. Beth Gaff. Uh, sorry, was, sorry. Black Snow White would be a uh, would be a. Uh, can I? No, 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 no. Right, okay. So, sorry, we're getting way off. Can I please have it? Yeah, sure. Plays films oh. reworked to potential controversial proportions. So it doesn't have to be about race. Uh, exactly. The example was about. Oh, uh, okay. I'm talking was. about like. We just picked sorry, up the word. Little racial. women made with all men. Right. Okay. Sorry, I think... Or we, King Lear done with sheep. I, th- I think we... Can't <laughs> that it's happening in Hoxton. It's now happening. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm all about that. Right, okay. What I'm talking about Definitive. is... Definitive. I mean, I, 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 for, like, a really good example, I, I thought, was um, turning Science of the Lambs into a musical. Pure, purely because oh, making silence. certain parts of that song a musical. Like, one, one song that involves the lyrics, I can smell your cunt... Like fucking yes, absolutely. Wow. Wow. If it wasn't just, it just didn't just feature that. I believe it was called that. How would it go? I, I can't can remember. Smell I, I, the whales. This is this is why we need uh, Kel here because she went to see it. I'd have to say as well, Cannibal the Musical. Well, that's not reworking really it, but yeah, absolutely. Um, Basically, yeah, no. um, I heard that there was this um, Othello production that was Actually, completely. Yeah. Patrick Stewart, as you say, Patrick Stewart, and it was completely flipped uh, racially. When I was studying in A level drama, we went to go see Othello, yeah. and uh, it was in uh, the upstairs of a pub. And it didn't actually matter what I can't remember what a lot of the races were uh, of the actors that I went to go see. I know Desdemona was white, um, but I can't remember a lot of them. I do remember that Bianca character was black, and this is very important in the play. Mm-hmm. But it's not if you're just going to watch someone act it. So when I heard that on purpose there was a Patrick Stewart version where he was the only white one and everyone else was black, 
I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it. And I wondered how everyone else might feel about something that there's a point to the story that um, is significant that you're um, mucking around with to um, portray maybe a prejudice that's on some other thing like disability or sex or... Can I give an example? Yeah. Um, I went to see a production of Macbeth where the whole cast was black apart from Lady Macbeth to draw parallels with Idi Amin. And that was very well done. That was incredibly well done. Wow. And yeah, that really... Was because it, she's so what, manipulative. Was it enjoyable, was it? Well, no, so. because um, a, a lady actually went over to, as a journalist, to interview him and, and then became his wife. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the parallel was spot on. No, I, I, think, I, think, I think that sort of thing is quite important because it gives you an opportunity. Like, there, there'll be those who'll say, oh, yeah, but it absolutely ruins the, the original concept. But if you take it in, in a very boiled down fashion, it gives you an opportunity to sort of explore your own prejudices. I think if you're saying it ruins the original concept, no, 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 not no, you. I'm not, no, but, not you. Yeah. But I'm, if people say it, re- it ruins the original concept, the original concept's already been done, I guess. That was their communication of it. So if someone else can do it very well and commu- can communicate their prejudices in an amazing way, that's awesome. I just worry that Honor. people do it for for effect. Okay, well, may, may, may I suggest a certain one that, for instance, is uh, it's The Tempest. There's a filmed version of it, which stars Helen Mirren. It's has. absolutely phenomenal. Oh, I, start, I, you, I, I started watching it, it the other day, that. and unfortunately I fell asleep because I was dead tired. Okay. Long so time to watch it, but I you, will get into if it. If you know the basic story of, of, of The Tempest, which is, is that if you've watched Return, for the, uh, Return to the Forbidden Planet, is it Return 2 or from? Yeah, or, uh, two. yeah. 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 Two. Return to the Forbidden Planet, it's basically... Return back. from the Forbidden Planet. Oh, I'm home. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but however, um, the character of Caliban, which is uh, in this instance, Legend. I think, played by the robot in Re- Return from the yeah. Forbidden Planet. Oh, yes. correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, the, uh, in the filmed version of it, uh, as in of The Tempest, you have Helen Mirren uh, as the lead character, and then you have basically... Uh, Jimon Hunsu as Caliban. He was amazing right. in that role. The, only, the, the interesting thing about it is that Caliban is is much as like, for instance, Othello is is the the Moor of of Venice and sort of stuff like that. Um, therefore, seen as a racial outcast. Uh, you know, much as Merchant of Venice, you know, you have this kind of like Jew that is apparently the the, the big evil sort of thing. In the Tempest, uh, Caliban is supposed to be. It's not even referred to as what race or colour he is. It's more that he is simply a social and racial outcast. Um, he is supposed to be a race that has been subsumed by the lead character that um, is supposed to sort of been subjugated, which is a huge, you know, it's an allegorical sort of position as to the Queen Victoria at the time going over to America yeah. and essentially enslaving the shit ton of people. Um, however, what happens in this film version of The Tempest is it's Jimon Hunsu, who some people may recognise from, like, for instance, uh, The Gladiator, yeah. which he's uh, The Gladiator's sort of like gladiator friend, uh, the, the black guy, basically. He's a great, great oh. African actor. I believe he is African. I, I believe yes, I'm right I can't remember where he's yeah. from, but yeah. But uh, Jimon Hunsu has been a ton of fantastic, as, a, as a, a multilingual fantastic actor, but he's presented in The Tempest as um, being simply black. He's not painted in a particular way. Oh, he's, he's half... He's Yes, but he's... Nevertheless, he appears as simply a black yeah. person, yeah. which, of he course... different skin tones all over him. Yeah. Which is... I mean, it's, it's suggested in Shakespeare's original script that he's covered in seaweed and is this horrific monster. But however, the, the, the one... Uh, but what I would just leave back to the original point is really that what Shakespeare can do in a lot of his pieces is suggest a hell of a lot that leaves you to change it as much as you will. The the thing I'd like to highlight about it is that what it's left is to classical uh, pieces of, uh, of you know, theatre is that you can interchange female to male or black to white or yeah. Indian to yeah, yeah, Asian or anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But, then, but then you can, you can change the setting. The same story can happen here or here or here or whatever. Um, like the Richard the Third that was set in Nazi Germany, or the um, the um, the Jason horror film uh, for um, uh, f- uh, it's not Friday the Thirteenth, is it? That was Freddy. Well, Halloween. Ju- Friday the Thirteenth no? was Jason. No. Uh, Halloween was Mike Myers. 
the, uh, the, the fucking Jason. pond. Yeah. Friday the 13th with Jason. Yeah, Jason. Lake. Sorry? That's, 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 the lake. Yeah. It was Jason. That's Friday the 13th. Connected. Yeah. So they did Friday the 13th in space. So you're just taking the same story. <laughs> Jason, Jason X. No, no, Jason X was beautiful. Yeah, is, sorry. Is, is, that is this was, on the that same? Was, yeah, yeah it, it, that was that extended an idea, like a comic sort of extension of... It took it to a preposterous conclusion, which is kind of what this Isn't topic it was about. Isn't to a preposterous no, 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 idea? Speaking, speaking, yeah, okay, okay, actually, it's not, it's not always preposterous. Ghostbusters. I, I was... On ice. No, 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 just talk about the new female. ones. Yeah, yeah, with, with the females. I, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think that's going to be wicked. Like, they've, they've got some fucking amazing... Are you saying that's preposterous? No, you're saying girls... Fantastic. Are you saying girls can't but fight? And I'm very happy it's, about it. It, has, it has caused a lot of controversy, or controversy for almost no reason, which kind of feeds into my next point. Like, which like, is what I was saying. Like, like I was saying, like when, when things are done for uh, uh, controversy, like that's kind of important because it's taking an issue and then making it applicable to other people. We're saying, oh, well, look, in this one... The white people are the black people, and the black people, uh, the black person is a white person. How the fuck does that feel? Like that's important, but it's also important when it's done without the intent of uh, controversy. And like uh, where this came up really, really recently was well, not that recently, but with the Thor film, where um, it was Idris Elba was. Uh, uh, we okay, are cancelling the apocalypse. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm near. No! Um, and every, like, the <laughs> internet reacted instantly. like, no, no he's no, a Norse yeah, god. Yeah, yeah. He must be blonde and blue-eyed. And it's like, well, okay, there, there's no point in in, yes. in Norse mythology where it says anything about Bizarre. anyone's race. Is, there's just so the assumption is that... The, that is like, Idris Elba really getting crap from that as well as... as being being no, 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 he didn't get crap because he fucking smashed it. And it's, it's important to do yeah. that because he showed that it doesn't really matter who plays it it's a so fucking story it's well it's, it's not just that it's just like, like so every film. the the exactly. character the, the character wasn't outlined in terms of race it was merely a norse god and the assumption from um like comic book uh fans was that well in the comics he he wasn't you know he wasn't a black guy and in north north mythology he wouldn't be a black guy but then north mythology norse. never norse mythology um, never sort of stated either way, but well, then are we the saying like historical be... accuracy or, 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 or sort of like you know uh, mythology? Com, com, now the whole books, books, no, it's, 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 it's... are full of historic accuracy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but... <laughs> <laughs> but however, but, but, but the important thing is, is like in in doing that, it was shown that it doesn't fucking matter. May I? It really yeah. doesn't because he he smashes that role. May I may, 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 may I suggest a certain idea, which I think oh. is, which, if he had which, done it badly, would have suggested it wasn't. Okay, but, but but what but what, <laughs> what 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 good point, Johnny? What maybe supports or, or or challenges like you know best points about all this? There's something in particular that I really like the idea of, which is uh, recently James Bond fans and even those outside of being fandom of James Bond um, have suggested who the next Bond because obviously we have it that you know this current Bond isn't going to be Bond forever and in fact actually he Daniel Craig tried to retire after really? I think the first or second Has film or something like that yeah, yeah but he he actually genuinely he announced his retirement whether it was a PR thing or whatever however recently it's been clear that we need to replace him because he doesn't want to do it forever and there has been a series, I think it was started by a tabloid like Sun or Mirror or whatever, which is what makes it fantastic, is that <laughs> of the shortlist, one of them was Idris Elba. Mm. Now, Idris Elba is an English actor who is, I've adored every single thing he's been in. He's fucking His incredible. acting is exceptional. His breadth of accents is wonderful. He does happen to be black, but his... But we won't hold that against him. Yeah, but his breath of his. I won't hold it his, against me. His, <laughs> he's hot as hell. But his breath of actions, though, happen to be just brilliant. Now, there's a lot of people going, "Hang on a minute, no wait, this is James Bond." So someone suggested, almost like this kind of like you know, alternative comic stuff. Oh, sorry, there's a there's terminology for it, but I, I I don't know what it is. Like the what if stuff, or what you know, the the history changing stuff. Mm. The theory being is that. We, we can't help but notice James Bond as a character and as a film well, character um, has been existent, extant since, what's the first uh, Bond film, like 60-something? Doctor No. Yeah, mm. that was 67, 8 or, or something like that. And you'd think, well, he's not, if he were extant now, 2015, he'd be fucked. You know, he's not going to fight anymore. So, And he's remained young. So the idea being is that... Regenerative. Double, 007... 
007 apparently could possibly uh, like the name James Bond is an adopted like 007 yeah. is is an adopted name. So like, why like can't like M or Q? It, no, it's or Dr. Yeah. No. absolutely. So why absolutely. can't Idris Elba be? I, I would love to see the absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Be incredible, on, a, on, a, really. on a, another connected point, the amount of. Um, What's his drink? Dry martini, shaking, not stirred, right? Oh, yeah, you've got to change the Heineken. Stirred. Hardly ever drinks that in the books. <laughs> oh, no. you got to change the Heineken. He drinks mostly whiskey in the books. Really? Although, in the Daniel in the books Craig, he does. In the Daniel Craig films, it got wiped, that mm. whole... Sorry, and... My, my point being that if, if that can be represented with such a level of inaccuracy from the original text, what the hell is the problem? Move? Exactly. Why is there any difference between a drink and a colour? Doctor No was not like, the first book. Absolutely. And, absolutely. That well, and he rounds it up, mate. Like, his, his drink <laughs> has recently been changed to Heineken because you can now sell, like, uh, product placement in films. I want to see his new car fine. covered in the hey, Heineken symbol. That happened in the, uh, the early 007, though. Was, okay, okay, fine, it there. did, you know, I thought that was a recent thing. But, like, I'd, I'd, I'd love him to be, like, Idris Elba to be Bond, that'd be wicked. However, based on the ideas of the person who wrote the base text... But we're way thing. beyond that. We're, yeah, un unfortunately, like, no, the artist has yeah, had his say, yeah, it's, it's now cultural heritage. Yeah, abs absolutely. The law it has just... It was, it was, it was just a thinking it. point. No, fair enough. Like, Bond was never in the, in the writer's eye supposed to be anything else but... The classic Bond. But since yeah. when are, but since, since when are we faithful to texts? <laughs> since when are we faithful to texts? No, no, I'm not saying we shouldn't be. I'm not saying we absolutely should be. I'm just bringing that out as an, uh, an interesting point. Would point everyone like? <laughs> would everyone <laughs> in this the room therefore be unhappy <laughs> seeing Idris Elba as Bond? God no, he'd be no. amazing. <laughs> just, he'd be absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. phenomenal. I can't wait till Fantastic. Ken Dodd gets a fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> and on that <laughs> note. <laughs> Let's wrap this fucking shit up. Thank you very much, listeners, for tuning in to us for two hours of absolute fucking bullshit. There was a session, there was, music came up early on. I didn't write it down, but I assumed I assumed that was going to be the music. What is it? Well, what I've written down here is the Wallace and Gromit theme. Fleming, as a Thorndike. Jesus. What I've written down here is a Wallace and Gromit theme as a funeral dirge. Uh, oh, oh Remind me of the Wallace and Gromit So, uh... Guys, guys, may I lead? Oh, in, in Major G. Remember. Dun, to share and dun, tell a friend dun, about this podcast. Dun, 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 dun. Why, guys? Why? <laughs> Our website is at pottopicpodcast.com where you can sign up to the newsletter. You can find us at Twitter at Pottopic Podcast. <laughs> Dum 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 Search Pot Topic Podcast on Facebook and Tumblr. Hashtag Pot Topic Podcast on Instagram to get all your pictures on our community wall, pottopicpodcast.com. Check it out. These are my right trousers. What are you talking about? One, two, three, four. Emails at the hottopicpodcast.com. Send in your feedback. Or why not just rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher? Rate or review us in iTunes and Stitcher if you didn't hear that. Thank you very much. Five stars, please. Yay, love you. And <laughs> like and subscribe on YouTube is that, no, if don't. that's how you prefer no, to listen no, to us, do. because I know many of you do, because oh, I got God, bitched really? at last time because oh. I didn't put it up with, on the and same day. I... Thank you, Danny. Can I, can I just say, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for having me on. I'll be back in about a year, I guess. <laughs> thank you, Johnny, for coming all the way from Turkey. Whee! Next and time, come from liver. <laughs> Fuck you. That's an example of a bad pun. <laughs> 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 that one. That one. That one. <laughs> <laughs>
Get used to this episode with Meatball Parade by Kevin McCurr for Competech.com. This license under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. Please see the MP3 comment tag or show notes on hottopicpodcast.com for more information. Everyone well needs done, a lot. Ryan. Well done, Ryan. Well done, Tom. Well done, Ryan. Let's, Let's have, have another one. one. What are we going to do? Because we can't really react to a performance we saw five minutes no. ago. So I'm going to do a No, brief... we can do it. We can do it. I'm going to do a brief TV. intro. Yeah. So it's quite I mean, polar, isn't but it? But bear in mind, we usually, we usually do our reactions yeah. without ever hearing the piece first. No, we usually take the piss out of the musical interludes. Yes, we That's do. true. We don't usually hear why, it. Why? Why? No. Let's take the tradition. What? So yeah, we got to take this out. Of town, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. You know. Fuck off! It's amazing. I've never been roasted you, before. You didn't, you didn't. It won't be roasting. It'll be us comparing you to like how? How? We didn't take this. We take his other hand. Yeah. What? You, you've never been roasted before. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> I am all with right. you. All good to go. Yeah, all of the ends. To all of the ends. Yeah. <laughs> all of the ends all met at once. Hashi please. Hey, everyone. Grab it in, Tom.